fan of of uh, talking shit though. So yeah, I, I do. I do it all the time. I hate people that are like, "Oh, you talk shit, this and that." And I'm like, "Well, I criticize a lot." I go to me. There's a, a separation between talking shit and like actively trying to destroy someone's. Well, and also there's a separation. Here's a big one to me. I I don't know. I don't want to make like a claim that this should be everyone's rule. To me, I hate the idea of using a public forum if you have the the if you've earned the right to be in a public forum and have a listenership i don't like talking shit about people because of their work if yeah. you're not a i'm not a fan of this band i'm not a fan of that comic so i'm going to go on the air and trash them that i've never been and i i, I will go out of my way not to do that mm. now if someone dug their own grave and they're an asshole yeah <laughs> if you're a gigantic bitch to me and I wa or watch you be like that. A lot of times I'll judge people by how they treat uh, production staff, mm -hmm. you know, because I, I would see it in TV and a, a lot in, in radio as well, but a, a lot more in TV because the staff would be so large, right? Where I'm co-hosting some show and fill in the blank celebrity be really nice to me. Yeah. And then I'll watch them just talk shit to like a gaffer. And I'm like, whoa, what? Yeah. Like you just made a, a a conscious decision that this person's worth me being nice and this person's not. <laughs> yeah, I see, dude. It's crazy because I see that all the time nowadays with um just everyone, like uh, influencers, social media people, where they'll treat you like a certain way, and then they'll like see if you're with someone important or if yeah. if someone I'm with has like a massive following, they just switch gears and they're like. I'm going to be really nice to you. We're friends. Or if you're nothing, they just dismiss you. It's just crazy. Though. I've had a hard time in the the new world of kind of I, I cancel culture or whatever, mm -hmm. where people are actively trying to bring people down. I've had a hard time because a lot of times those people will be so nice and good to me mm -hmm. that I'm like, man, I don't even want to hear this. I, 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 I uh, Dalia or, or, or Callan's another good example. Like I was like, but that, like he's, I know he's a great guy. He's yeah. really nice to me. He's supportive. He's actively engaged in listening to me and treats me well. And so it's hard to hear all this stuff. You know, Drew, Drew's yeah. the the, pin, the pinnacle. Dr. Drew's the pinnacle because he said one thing uh, or he made one appearance on Fox News and now millions of people are yeah. going to shit on Drew. Ruth, and I'm out there like, to one thing, yeah. Dr. Drew's an excellent human being. Like mm -hmm. you guys are so off and it makes me very mad, you know? Yeah, well... I you know, I had, uh, when we went and hung out with Brian Callen and Brendan Schwab, you know, I'd only known the rumors. Yeah. And one of the things I try to do to separate myself from that kind of that herd mentality is not buy into the public depiction of people or, you know, all the hate. And I know Brendan gets, he, that guy deals with a lot it's of a shit. Industry. Yeah. Making fun of Brendan's, you, people make like 20 grand a month yeah, shitting on Brendan. It was insane. But yeah. then talking to him, I was like, like I don't see it. I don't see why. Like maybe you know we just didn't have that much time together. But I was just like I, I was starting to see. I was like, oh wait, this guy just isn't playing the game like everyone else. Like, no, he, you know he's trying to treat everyone else. You know, gives everyone the time of day. It's also he's he's in a lab. Mm -hmm. If you invented um, a guy that young men don't like, it's Brendan <laughs> for this reason. Like, he's he works really hard and he's really rich and successful. Mm -hmm. He's really good looking. And so a lot of times you take that automatically yeah. and a lot of young men will fall back on and like, well, well, fine, but I can kick his ass. And I, no, no, you, you cannot yeah. him, you know, so he, he it's checks up bigger all, than he's I thought. all this, all these boxes with Brendan, you check off where it's like a lot, like it's easy to be jealous of him, mm -hmm. you know, and I, I, that breeds a lot of hate with young men. I, I, and I, I, I skated on it because I'm 45. I'll be 45 in a week. And I didn't have the internet to talk shit when I was very insecure and young. When I was 14 years old, I just walked around feeling <laughs> shitty about guys I went to school with or like guys that went to another school that were like really good at football and got a lot of chicks. I did that internally and I would talk with my buddies and be like, fuck that guy. If I had the internet, I'd be out there. I'd be on Reddit. I'd be on killing dudes because <laughs> you're really insecure. You yeah. feel bad about yourself. You don't know where your place in life is and stuff. So I get it. But at the same time, it's all misguided. Brendan yeah. is not that guy. He's not. Yeah. We actually know? had a lot in common. There was a lot of stuff we were talking about. Uh, which huge kind of, cock. You yeah. both have huge, massive, massive yeah. cocks. Yeah. Just can't help it. Um, we uh, share back pain because of that. Yeah. Um, but one of the <laughs> things, one of the things was um, uh, the trends. We both 
find all today's like fitness trends hilarious. Yeah. And we, when we were talking about the cold plunges, we're like, because we both played football. Yeah. And we're like, yeah, we've been doing that our whole lives. It's called ice bath. Like yeah. we just get in a garbage you know, football players, can. football players <laughs> laugh at ice plunge or cold plunge or yeah. ice bath and wrestlers all laugh at sauna. Like how yeah. people think like a sauna happened a year ago. <laughs> yeah. And they're like, I, I saw Ben Greenfield do his infrared sauna. And I know it's I'm like, you understand all wrestlers have been sauna in every day yeah. for like 150 years, you know, it was nothing. Yeah. We were sitting there and he was ta- telling me about how like a plunge company wanted to send him one. He's like, no, like yeah. I have. A, a plastic bin yeah and if i want to do that i'll just fill it up with ice and water uh i don't need a six thousand dollar tub that just gets really cold when i and, and switch when i say that too i'm mm-hmm. not saying cold plunges and saunas aren't awesome they're dope mm-hmm. and they work what i am saying is like it, it it's silly that now it's trendy yeah because and it, and i see it in it's fitness. nothing new i yeah. see it in fitness so much where it's like i'll get a hundred emails a week all of a sudden about like Mike Mentor's high intensity training <laughs> principles. And I was like, you understand, this has been around for like 50 years. Like you, yep. you, people are like, what do you think of, have you heard of ketogenic dieting? And I was like, you know, that happened like 10 years ago. It's like where yeah. everyone's about low carb. I was like, you understand, like Vince Gironda was eating eggs and meat in like the forties. Like that was a, <laughs> and this is, it's all like none of, none of this shit in fitness, especially none of it's new. Mm-hmm. And the big problem for me with with the social media and the TikTok and the internet and mm-hmm. the way that it's affected fitness is that the standards are so low. Yeah. I was just training this morning and there was a girl filming herself. I would never, I won't even say the gym so that there could be some way people narrowed it. She was fat. It's <laughs> shit. She looked like shit. Yeah. And she's filming herself with a tripod and a nice camera, and she's doing intros for her. Tri- like, and I go, man, in 1997, that girl with that physique would be mortified at the notion of anyone yeah. bringing a camera around her. Now, I'm not saying that it's right. I'm not saying that that's a good thing. Like, people should be proud of their bodies and feel comfortable in their own skin. What I am saying is, like, when it comes to like giving fitness advice or trying to lead the charge, there used to be a standard. Yeah. And jacked people and shredded chicks used to lead that. Mm-hmm. And <laughs> like, it's, yeah, you know, you, you nailed it on the head. That's one of the, the most frustrating things. And I think we've talked about it in the past before where, you know, with everything I build and all the business, you know, I do with people, there's nothing more frustrating than when I'm talking about potentially like partnering up, doing some sort of like advertisement um, trade, things like that. And then a company's trying to decide whether they want to work with me or some Susie Q chick with like mm-hmm. a big following who has zero knowledge in the fitness world, yeah. but because she's been reduced to her big following, which was probably gained by unfitness related things, uh, she is somehow deemed more credible than me. And that is extremely frustrating. And then you get the tripod goblins that d- sit there and they just, they're not really doing anything, but they, they're now calling themselves, you know, they'll change their, their social media handles to like their name underscore fit. Yeah. And, uh, yeah, yeah, and then there's no standard to it, and then they try to start an online program or on booty building, and then when they fail as a personal trainer, they'll rebrand as a mindfulness coach. That, the fuck that, that shit. Means. That shit sucks. <laughs> that shit sucks. Yeah, like there's probably. I, I mean, I can imagine. Let's go to Vietnam and find these monks <laughs> underneath a tree somewhere, and yeah. be like, let me show you what passes as a as a as a self help coach right now, and they'd be like, oh, are you out of here? Yeah, I'm so tired of. <laughs> 19 year olds trying to be a life coach and tell me how like life should be lived. Yeah. And then, and then there's the new fad, the breath work, which it's like, what? Like breath work. Like, what are you talking about? They're like, yeah, you know, become one with yourself. And yeah. We'll do all these breathing exercises. And I'm like, I'm it is, that. but, but breath work out of like, here's nothing. Mindfulness, meditation and breath work are all super valuable. And I encourage everyone to do yeah. them. Breath work in particular like, that's not just a matter of, like, hey, this is trendy and it makes you get mm-hmm. boosted. Any any athletic endeavor, any type of endeavor where you're doing something amongst high stress. Yeah. I, uh, ta- I do, tactical I mean, I shooting. Any uh, oh, uh, yeah. Hickson and, and Crone would spend considerable time with coaching talking about breathing. Yeah. Before they'd get into it, you know, and, and, and Hickson especially, like, I had the real weird luxury, uh, and any of you guys out there who are into jujitsu can understand. This is crazy, 
But I trained at Crone Gracie's Academy in Los Angeles before I moved here. And I like Crone very much. He's a very good guy. And he's very, obviously, just a stellar jiu-jitsu practitioner. But his father, Hickson Gracie, is, is widely considered like the Michael Jordan the, the of jiu-jitsu, yeah. you know? And there is a legend around Hickson that is uh, second to none because he's like this modern-day samurai. And there's this documentary choke that came out in the mid-90s about Hickson. And he lives this life that is like, it's hard to believe in a modern day, right? But you go in, I would, I, one time I showed up early to class when, when Crone decided he was going to transition into MMA, he would not be uh, available because his training had amplified so much, you know? Mm -hmm. um, so Hickson would teach noon class and I had an erratic schedule working the jobs I did. So I would oftentimes be going in and it was weird because I'd be in there with like four dudes and Hickson Gracie. And one time I showed up early and, uh, there was nobody there. Literally, like, I even walked in, and the person behind the counter to check in wasn't there. Like, they were in the back. <laughs> yeah. And so I was just, like, peeking around, hanging. And I went in, and Hickson was in the academy on the mats doing his weird breathing thing oh, the, by himself with yeah. his eyes closed. And I was like, whoa. I was like, yeah. he's like a real samurai, you know? And, and so <laughs> that shit's crazy. You know, like, he yeah. really was, like, this weird, not-of-this-world kind of guy that lived by the Bushido, you know? It was, it was so cool. But... Those those things are weird. The, that that kind of, I think it's the depiction of it because it's not that like I should probably rephrase that. I have nothing against like you know lifestyle like rebuilding their you know or counseling or breath work. It's it's how it's become a fad, and yeah. a buzz thing. And now you you have people that uh, are probably not credible, mm -hmm. calling themselves coaches. Yeah, and you know one thing I do that I get it pissed me off when someone told me this the other day. They said I was too nice. Uh, when it comes to business, mm. they're like, oh, you got to be more cutthroat. You got to be this and that. And I'm like, so I have to like be dishonest. Yeah. You know, if I, if I'm trying to sell something to someone, I want to make sure that the value matches what I'm selling. And, and it's a tough thing. Don't let them, don't let them do it. I'm if not, you, if you could weather the storm and it's not like I'm some massive tycoon, that, no. uh, but, but what I've seen just by a guy who is really invested into monitoring success, mm -hmm. seeing it, uh, I've been lucky enough to be around it a lot. The cutthroat guy or gal will make it quicker. Yeah. But this notion of life, nice guys finish last is not true because in the end, if you can weather the storm, yeah. the guy who guy or gal who does it with morality, with, with dignity, where uh, conscientious nature for others around you is intact, in the end, you'll win. Joe Rogan's a perfect example. People love to, because Joe's so successful... And I'm not saying it like we're buddies and like go out to dinner. <laughs> but when before the Joe Rogan experience happened, the Kevin and Bean show, which is where I worked in Los Angeles, was one of the radio shows Joe would do. He loved to come in and he would come in really frequently to promote his comedy stuff because there the, the Twitter wasn't really a thing yet. Uh, social media was MySpace. Really. It was MySpace. Yeah, yeah, it was Friendster MySpace era. Mm. And that wasn't going to drive ticket sales. Uh, and so Joe would come on the morning show pretty frequently to promote. I, I'm going to be at the Ice House for three nights in a row now. And he was that guy, like the, like he's with with two hundred million dollars of dispensable income. He's the same dude that used to come in. Yeah. He would come in, he'd walk in. He was cool with everyone. He gave me he used to give me give me and Kevin of Kevin and Bean. He used to give us tickets to UFC all the time. He would like reach out to us. He'd be like, "You guys want to go to the fights and stuff." And uh, he would listen when you talk. And he wanted to talk about hallucinogens yeah. and conspiracy theories and, and MMA. Like he's the same dude. You yeah. know what I'm saying? It was very, it's very nice to see that. And, uh, he may have shot up quicker if he was, you know, this kind of Machiavellian figure, but in the end he wins, yeah. he wins. You know? and, and that's kind of to come full circle with like the mindfulness coaches and all that stuff. And the lifestyle coaching is again, it's not that I have a problem. It's that, um, I'm just not interested in affiliating or promoting something that is clearly a get rich mm -hmm. tactic. Uh, a lot of these people are, you know, failed personal trainers. So yeah. then they moved into, you know, trying to take advantage of people that are struggling or weak minded. And, and a lot of these mindfulness coaches that I've met are fucked up. <laughs> They're the weirdest people. My and, wife's way more into kind of holistic and, and mindfulness stuff than I am. And so I see it through her, mm -hmm. but my aunt, who's one of my best friends is like very into like ayahuasca mm -hmm. and uh, sound bowls and stuff. But 
she's like, we, we get to have like really cool conversations about it. She's not like shoving it down my throat. Like this is what you need to do. It's more like, Oh, this is what I enjoy. This is what gives me peace. Things like yeah. that. And, yeah. and my, I see it through my wife because nine times out of 10, the same people who are telling literally making money, telling you how to be happier. Mm -hmm. They're a fucking mess. Yeah. Yeah, it's it's I feel like it's a distraction away from their own problems focusing yeah. on other people. But have you seen uh these uh these man camps popping up too? That bugs me. That's so weird. They just scream at you. I uh there's this one so I recently uh the last show I did was with Joey Stacks. Mm -hmm. And you'll probably get to meet him this weekend. He's a really cool guy. Yeah. But he gets a lot of shit too. But um he was talking about a guy that he had had an issue with named I think his name's Wes Watson or something, mm. but he, there's a viral clip going of him where he like has like a zoom call with one of his man camp clients. I know again, I'm not really sure what he does. I just know this clip and the guy's like, Hey Wes, like just want to say, I appreciate what you're doing and this. And the Wes guy's like, shut the fuck up. You're wasting my time, this and that. And I'm like, who talks to a client like that? And there's some people that somehow think that degrading someone somehow makes them stronger. It's, I, I don't know about, cause I'm not like, the, uh, the the pinnacle <laughs> the pinnacle of manliness. So yeah. I don't I don't know that world. But what I do know is overweight people who want to change. Yeah. And one thing I could say with great certainty is there's no need to shame overweight people into it because believe me, they're ashamed enough already. Yeah. There's no upside no. to being like, don't you get disgusted with yourself, you yeah. fat fuck? <laughs> like, and a lot of people, a lot of these like alpha male dude, that's their take. And I go, yeah. you do you think? I mean, I, I there was. I've never met a drug addict or alcoholic, myself included, who wasn't really painfully aware that they were throwing their life away. Yeah. It's just like you have, there's a million, there's a litany of these issues that lead you to this point. Mm -hmm. And uh, you're having a hard time dealing with those. It has nothing to do with like the delusion of feeling like you look good yeah. or that your life's going great. You're <laughs> fucking ashamed already. Yeah. Um, I don't think like fighting fire with fire is a, is a good idea. Also, there's a weird insecurity about doing that because I know, may, I, I will go as far to say, I personally am friends with the world's biggest alpha males. Yeah. There, there's <laughs> yeah. no bigger. Oh. You cannot get bigger alpha than Tim Kennedy. No. There's no, yeah. and I, I bro out with Tim. Yeah, I and, had him uh, on the show. That's Learned not a, a guy that's going to shame you. No. He was very encouraging. Yeah. Uh, and every time I've talked to him, uh, he's done nothing but offer words of encouragement. You know, he did the show and uh, it was a huge boost for everything moving forward after that. And, and since then, he's always offered words of encouragement. In reality, he could destroy me yeah. <laughs> like with one sentence. And don't get me wrong. That yeah. doesn't mean he he pussyfoots around stuff. No, like Tim, no. Tim will tell me, he's like, uh, that was terrible. Well, yeah, after, uh, yeah. On, uh, on the mats, he'll beat the shit out of me and then he'll be like, that was you're getting lazy. You're on your back. There, there's a difference between calling someone on their BS yeah. and shaming them. Yeah. Because I think in 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 the opposite direction, lying to someone mm -hmm. and and the most denigrating thing you can do is lower the standard for someone. Yeah. Yeah. And, I, and that's that's why I get now. that's my biggest concern. People, are, their biggest concern with woke stuff, if they get really uh, bummed out by super progressive stuff recently. Their biggest problem with it is that it annoys them. Yeah. Doesn't annoy me at all because it goes one ear out the other. Yeah. What uh, what bothers me a lot is that for women, for uh, LGBTQ community, for black people, you're going to start seeing like this hyper progressive stuff is essentially just asking, begging to lower the standards for this group of people. Yeah. And to me, that's the most denigrating thing you can do. I, I From any of my friends, uh, my brother-in-law, my wife's brother is, uh, he's a double amputee. Okay. And he's a disabled athlete. And um, I, I also train a guy. I have a, a, a personal trainer, a personal client uh, that has um, uh, not uh, cerebral palsy. Okay. And he's, he's in a wheelchair half the time. And uh, so my brother-in-law and, and my, my client, Jake, they, they constantly hammer home. Like the last thing I want is for you to baby me or yeah. to treat me like I'm less capable I'm the, 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 that whole new kind of woke notion of a handy capable. It was very real. Like the don't lower the standard for me. Cause that now you're treating me like a child and yep. I'm not a child. I just happen to be in a wheelchair, you know? Absolutely. I, I was telling a friend that, um, 
you know, it's getting so hard nowadays because of because of that like emasculated approach to society and that lowering the bar that people have become so entitled and lazy. Mm-hmm. And it makes my life so hard as someone that's trying to grow a business and and you know better my position in life. And I was telling my friend, I go, I just don't know how to succeed in a world that rewards degeneracy and laziness yeah. and and doesn't you know, require value anymore to do anything. There's that, but also like, be careful because I had this, I've had this problem a lot as someone who like worked really hard. And I think earned a a sense of legitimacy in broadcasting. I I find it very hard that now I'm in a world where being a really eloquent, well-informed broadcaster is not as important as being someone who's savvy at understanding algorithms, right? That, that bothers me. But at the same time, I can't just with a broad brush say that all these guys that are out there balling it up are not working hard because a lot of them are working hard just in a very different way than I used to. I used to have to really work hard at being well-read and and making sure that my, uh, you know, consistent grammatical errors that I was making, I had to correct that. And those were the things I invested my time in. Some of my friends or some of my acquaintances that I see that are really successful in the digital world, they're grinding really hard it's just in different things yeah. than i'm at. and so there is there there is a part of it where it's like well mediocrity is getting rewarded but there is also a world where it's like no people who are working really hard just in a new kind of crack that you and i haven't got into yeah. yet they're also being successful and i think it's because we grew up um or at least you know i there's i wouldn't say there's a a, a huge age gap between you and me but no. like i think i was kind of part of the last generation where it was required to work hard and, you know, I, I never really had the benefit of favoritism. I always yeah. had to work really, really hard just to get, you know, one step forward. And uh, so now, you know, moving forward in this time, it, it, God, it eats me alive when I see people that do nothing, just blown up. And uh, I've, you know, uh, but I also learned to adapt. You know, I don't hate the player. You got to hate yeah, the game. Yeah, so, you, know. you know, I've also been pretty disappointed in the consumer too. Because I I have nothing against, you know, and in fact, I uh, support like the free market capital approach to things, you know, but the what's being consumed is insane. It's almost like seeing like, you know, what happened? Don't don't people want anything good anymore? Like even I see it in movies you know, and TV shows and just shit. It all sucks now. They, people, by and large, don't want good things anymore. They want more. Yeah. Yeah. And that I, goes for training that goes for food that goes for movies that goes for clothing the people aren't really invested in going in in good they're invested they just are so desperate for more yeah and i don't mean that as an insult i mean that as like we've been kind of butt fucked by this (laughs) to just we need more 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 yeah well even even information we just need more even if it's not valuable to that us, dopamine you know? yeah. rush yeah dude it's uh i saw this really good quote i think i've talked about it on on the show before too of uh the illusion of options mm-hmm. and, and it pertains to relationships there was a um i think she was like a, a relationship counselor but she was really intelligent and she was talking about why dating is so hard nowadays is because of the illusion of options where mm-hmm. you know you could meet someone you really get along with well you vibe you get that honeymoon phase you get that really big rush and then you come up to your first problem with someone and then, you know, you're not really feeling that high anymore. And then you start wondering, can I do better? Can I do better? And then you're always deceived by the illusion of options yeah. because with social media, dating apps, you have access to more options right in the palm of your hand. That's true. I think that's certainly a factor. My biggest, in my opinion, mm-hmm. I'm not like a dating expert. No. <laughs> in my opinion, the biggest problem with dating is now girls are crazy Mm. and i'm not saying an anti this is not an anti-feminist thing this is before tinder only fans this world girls that were not tens did not assume they could get (laughs) fucking brad pitts and giga chats (laughs) but now because even like an average looking chick gets thousands of guys that are like yo i'll 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 tap that. I love you. I yeah. love you're my I'll favorite. Pay your bills. I'll do anything yeah. for you. And they don't realize like that's boner talking. Yeah. <laughs> and that all of those guys that are saying that, they don't care about you. It's pre They clarity. don't care about yeah. you at all. And 
I think un- it, this is it, it's like cry me a river super hot chicks, mm-hmm. but super hot chicks had to have I think at some point in their life the walls crashed in where they're like oh my god I've been treated like a rock star my whole life and only like one percent of these guys actually gives a shit about me as a human being okay mm-hmm. now I think all chicks are doing that and also twenty years ago a girl would be like hey this guy's this guy treats me like a queen. He's got a good, stable union construction gig. This is my man. Everyone has those, you know, you marry someone or you settle down with someone and you're like, you start to see the faults in again. But you still were like, this is my guy. And you work through now it. Now you're just scrolling through. You're like, five foot eight, nope. Uh, yeah. It's like, wait, that guy might have been perfect for you. You know, I think that that's a bigger, because let's not kid ourselves. Women still, in, in heterosexual relationships, women still run things. Oh, women women yeah. control. Guys have to go out and hunt for the woman, and women have to, by and large, kind of decide who they're going to settle down with, not the other way around. Unless you're, and and now all of these women are vying for this 1% of guys who just slay dick all day. <laughs> yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. And that's the funny thing about what people, what people misunderstand about, like, famous cocksmiths. Mm-hmm. You know, the Adam Levine or the, the the Derek Jeters of the way you they've been that guy since eighth grade yeah <laughs> yeah. yeah being yeah. on the Yankees helps yeah I'm, being in Maroon Five helps but trust me there's th- there's this fringe narrow thing of guys who have always had no problem where women turn the tables and literally approach them there's those guys and that's a really small narrow and those guys have always treated women poorly because they could. Mm -hmm. And now all girls think that they're going to get that guy and they're not. Mm -hmm. And then because of that, 99% of these guys, they're just shitting on them. And they're like, wait, wait, I I treat you great. And they're like, yeah, but I have Giga Chad in my DMs. And he has 100,000 followers. He has 200,000 followers and he he has abs. And and it's like, yeah, but Giga Chad's not, (laughs) like he's not going to be your dude. You understand that, right? He's going to settle down with fucking Margot Robbie (laughs) or some chick in Abu Dhabi who's going to keep her fucking mouth shut and has an amazing, you know what I'm saying? Like, I always say, uh, my my family's always asking me like, when are you going to settle down? When are you going to dart? Date, you know, are you talking to anyone? This and I'm like, I'm a, I'm focused on this because I'm probably a future passport bro. Yeah, and you familiar with that? Oh, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. So if you're not Johnny, you know what a, a passport bro is? You yeah. go, yeah, it's where they bounce around country to country, just yeah. like sleeping with chicks. Now, now, well, kind of. It's where, where it's it's where you go to another country that has more like uh, values, like cultural values, like family values. Uh, so you you kind of um, are gravitated to the. Uh, how would you explain it? It's, it's, like, it's the, like, look, they, they they go to other countries where traditional moral values traditional, are, are yeah. very... Traditional gender roles are also a lot more valued. And you go to Colombia, you go mm-hmm. to uh, Bulgaria, and you find yourself a woman there, and you move her back to America, and you're like, you live a happy life. Because yeah. she's like... She doesn't she, care about the attention. She'll cook. No. She'll she'll worship the granny walk when you get home from work. That, that thing. And I, look, obviously, that's a... That's a, a, a idealized exaggeration yeah. of how it may be. But I look, I get that. And I and I'm not, like I love America. I love American women. I'm not denigrating them in a, I feel bad because I think that the phones and the OnlyFans and they have tricked you into yeah. thinking. And the the OnlyFans is a big one because the bear I grew up in Southern California. I grew up in Los Angeles County. So <laughs> I was at the I was in the epicenter of where that one chick at your high school or maybe a couple chicks at their high school decided, yeah, I'll go down to Northridge and get into porn. Like yeah. I, I lived that world where it's like, or maybe have a couple pictures taken for Hustler. And you know, the barrier of entry to get to that point was really big where you're like, I'm going to go down and meet with adult men and be like, okay, you're going to audition me and I'm going to get, get on the naked couch. and maybe do something like that's, that's a big leap. Mm-hmm. To be on your couch at home by yourself and film yourself with a with a vibrator, not a big barrier of entry. No. And I feel like that's going to be, there's going to be a lot of price to pay for that yeah. in 20 years. Well, what I've noticed is I do have um, a, a handful of like really good friends, but they also do OnlyFans. Some of them actually are in the porn world. Mm-hmm. And one thing I've noticed is when it comes to relationship, they are extremely desensitized to intimacy. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, And then what they do is they try to mask it with, alcohol or some other form of drugs and and just try to 
you know, almost fake it. Like they just, they want to, uh, even if they misguide themselves, they, they want to have that experience, but yeah. they've just, they've overstimulated themselves for so long that they don't even know what's real or not anymore. So they just pretend. They live look, in a if, you drink, if you drink three pots of coffee a day, it's pretty hard to feel the buzz off one cup. Yeah. And I look, I will say it because let's, let's, let's for a second, like stop beating up on chicks. <laughs> I'll say it, be very honest with you. Mm-hmm. I was lucky as a bachelor in fact, all day, every day. And I never really had any evidence to show that I couldn't just go get another girl if I wanted to. Yeah. And uh, especially when I got on TV, where um, I was quite successful. And I have a heart, I, I will not even lie to you and say like, I don't look back on it fondly and would probably do it again anyway. Mm-hmm. But I found myself really empty and it hurt me and I have a hard time with legitimate intimacy now even to this day I've been married for it'll be 12 years in in December so uh and 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 we had dated a year or so before so you're talking about 13 years of me with one woman and it's still hard because I did things in a pretty distorted way where I didn't even really have to date girls a lot. I had one, maybe two girlfriends Mm -hmm. between my first wife and my current wife. And uh, the rest was just like, I'd be uh, be places and attractive women would be like, can you give me a ride home? And I'm like, really? Yeah. Okay. (laughs) Like, what are you doing tonight? Uh, I don't know. I think I was going to, I was going to stay in and just chill. I'm so tired from, can I come over? And you're like, are you? Because like, so s- like high school me yeah. was like, is this real? Is someone pranking me? Because I'm, I'm not a, I'm not Adam Levine. I was a, I was just a regular kid that desperately wanted to have hot chicks and it was really hard. Yeah. And then next thing you know, I'm 25, 27 and like girls would just be like, here, have sex with me. And I'm like, oh, and, and it fucked me up. Yeah. So I, 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 I'm not speaking from some place where it's like, I'm just going to point out these girls and they've done it wrong. No, I know it sucks. And, 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 and it's hard because I'm talking out of both sides of my mouth. Cause I yeah. like, I kind of miss it. Just the physical, the, yeah. the visceral aspect of, oh, sorry. The visceral aspect of it is like having sex with numerous attractive women is pretty fucking rad, <laughs> but yeah. It, it, it has, it, you pay a price. You yeah, pay I wonder a price. if it's a, a maturity thing. I had a the similar experience growing up in Idaho. I was like everyone's little brother. Mm-hmm. You know, I was the friend zone guy. And then I moved when I, you know, I, I got tanner, I got bigger and I went and played football and I was in Chico, California, mm-hmm. which is one of the craziest party towns of all time. You have, and, if you've not experienced it, he is right. Yeah, it like, is. I know you go like, oh, I go to a crazy school. But no, Chico's. It's, yeah, it's they, bizarre crazy. Yeah, they used to shoot. Uh, the cops would, they would ride. Th- it's a very small town, so you develop what we call Chico feet. You walk everywhere. But then they were on horses uh, to clear the streets. But then house parties were so out of control. It was like Project X every almost every night. Yeah. And they would shoot smoke grenades into backyards <laughs> and shit to, when they got, it was insane. It, and it was so much fun. But then I got so much attention from women that I never had ever. And I like didn't really know at first how to like respond to it. I remember the first First girl I got with there, I uh, like it was like the first hookup. I tried to ask her on a date, and she was like, "Oh, what? Like, yeah. don't like no." And I thought it was so weird. And getting yeah. shot down for being a gentleman is bizarre. It, it wrecks your brain. Yeah. It so after brain, that, dude. I was like, "Oh, everything's transactional. Like, yeah. I don't actually have to like all my morals from growing up in a small town where you know you talk to one girl, the whole everyone's going to know about it, and yeah. it'll be attached to that forever." So it was crazy to go. Um, down that rabbit hole for a while but then yeah like you said it, it did kind of mess me up for a while where you know i'd only become accustomed to one thing i, I wasn't really i didn't know how to date you know i didn't yeah. i wasn't sure how to be a, a a partner to someone so and if you don't force a guy to have to yeah that, then you're getting into weird territory man I, I i'm sorry i must pause i'm gonna pee in my pants go for it yeah no. feel better no. dude can't, i can't explain how how much i feel better <laughs> nice all right so we're back now, dude. I uh, I did a show with uh, a comedian. Her name was Leonardo Joni, and we were drinking these like protein waters. I don't know what it was about it, but it would go through. And I remember she was talking, and I could feel my gut like 
like I've never had this experience, but it was like pressing out. Like it was like from had, liquid. Yeah. And I, it hurt so bad. And I'm like, tr- she just was talking and talking and I'm like, I was about to piss my pants. And then finally she like stopped. I go, I got to go to the bathroom. Yeah. She's like, I've had to go to the bathroom this whole time. And I was like, Oh dude, it hurts so much. You like, want to know why I think there's a lot to criticize about like <laughs> modern feminism, but yeah. there is something to it yeah. because right now, as you're talking, yeah. This is a woman who is building a career as a comedian and she's probably got a lot going. She's probably working to develop herself as a human being. All I could think about was like, I wonder if she's hot. (laughs) As you were talking, I was going to, I was like, is she, I'll uh, introduce you. She is a tough chick, bro. She will, she'll bite your head off. She's from uh, New York. She's a Albanian. She's, she's probably, she's ruthless. Like, uh, she'll, I, I love hanging out with her because it's nice to be around someone that doesn't like get walked on like that. Like she'll, she'll eat you up. Well, uh, but, but I do think I'm speaking to something uh, that's, that is legitimate. And, uh, I, I remember I, I had this lady on Loveline. And she was a sex therapist. She, she was a real PhD. She wasn't just like this yeah. new wave. Like, yeah. I, I'll tell you how. She was a... a, a Watched a, sec- a few motivational videos. Now she's, I'm an expert. She's really hot. I wish I could remember her name. To, to More so to give her her credit. But, but um, she was really attractive. And she was this legitimate, like, uh, ton years of schooling and experience. And, and she was uh, a, a really, really well-respected in her field. And I, and I asked her directly. I said... I don't think anyone's going to complain or or bitch and moan about being attractive because that's obviously comes with certain levels of advantages. But do you feel like it's been harder for you because I'm I'm I respect you very much for what you do and and clearly you're very good at it. But this whole time I'm like kind of in a daze cuz you're so good looking. Yeah. And she <laughs> said and she said yes and she said yes. It was certainly she's like with guys there is a, there's a, there's a barrier I have when I walk in a room to have a meeting to to deal with a patient. There's a barrier that I have to close mm-hmm. that other people don't, and I and I don't think even attractive guys deal with that. I don't think Doctor Drew. I'm sure there's plenty of girls that are like, oh wow, he's cute, but then you get immediately down to like diagnose me, physician. Yeah. Um, whereas guys, we get like also there's an assumption. I, I certainly. I've heard like Whitney Cummings and stuff do you talk about um you have to be funnier. If you're a comic, you have to be funnier if yeah. you're a hot chick. Yeah. You have to be funnier than the average person just to get to the point where guys will because automatically there's an assumption it's like, well, she's only up there because she's great rack or whatever. Yeah. You know, like and 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 it's it's worse than you girls can assume. Mm-hmm. Us guys in our boners. <laughs> like I remember when the Casey Anthony thing was happening. Even I'm not talking about I'm not talking about us three talking shit yeah. behind the scenes like dude the see your titties. Yeah. I'm talking about like like broadcasters and and, and a, like district attorneys. I'd be at CNN about to do these panel shows, and we know we're going to talk about Casey Anthony and like well respected guys and stuff. They'd be like, bro, do you see the sh- the picture of her in her that tight t shirt today? Do you see her jumping up and down celebrating? Like, and the and they're like. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> they're like she killed her child, and yeah. we're still like, did you see them titties though? Yeah. Seriously, <laughs> she's hot, so it's okay. And then she got quitted. Yeah, <laughs> and so it, yeah. I think um, that's a that's a real thing for feminism that I like. I go, I hear you, and actually, like, I'm trying my best. I'm being receptive because mm-hmm. I, but I'm weird about it too, though. Now, especially because I'm married in jujitsu, where it's like even more so than. Um, other physical activity where you're getting so yeah. up and close and personal. Like sometimes when women are really attractive, I, 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 I like avoid them because I'm like, I, I don't even want to <laughs> yeah. be put in this situation. A lot of them are beautiful too. A lot too of them like are... too good looking. Yeah. And, and it's been like, I've rolled with girls who are so attractive that I go like, I, this is weird. You feel like you're cheating. This is weird. <laughs> yeah. No, it's weird. Like yeah. I, I don't, um, I don't, uh, I don't almost don't like it because Either I'm feeling like I'm gonna I'm gonna get a boner, yeah, <laughs> and that's way inappropriate. That's yeah. way inappropriate. Or I feel like even though I'm not doing something um, inappropriate, I feel like I am. Yeah, like I'm I'm uh, breaking her guard and I'm like pushing down on her area right above her genitals, and I'm like, this is not. I'm not doing something inappropriate, yeah. but I feel like I'm doing something inappropriate. That's how I felt when I was in high school. And like, there would be uh, girls that, like, back when I was in high school, girls wrestled the guys. Yeah. Like, there wasn't separate classes. And uh, we were all terrified. We're like, is she in our weight class? Like, do we have to wrestle her? And like, this and that. And fortunately, I never had to, but 
yeah, I totally understand. We, we actually had a girl on a wrestling team. She was really cool though. Um, so I never really felt inappropriate, but wait, girls, um, girls who wrestle guys though, they have like a 20 pound advantage to them, right? Well, we had weight classes, right? But, it, but they get to, uh, uh, they get a 20 pound buffer. Don't they? No. They don't? No, no. Oh, see, we get, but, high school but what girl is in your weight class? Well, when That's I was why. in high school, I was like 150, 160 oh, pounds. okay. So yeah. probably was some. Yeah. So, but most of them were like 130. So like more like my freshman, sophomore year. But yeah, they, uh, um, they were, I mean, a lot of the girls weren't that good too. Yeah. So, but guys were terrified that they were going to get like fully torqued mid-match. So I, I've been, <laughs> she made it very clear. She's actually pretty famous. So I'm not, and she's like, if you could, I'll do, I'll roll with you. But yeah. if we don't film it and don't, and I said, oh yeah, I absolutely promise. So I'm not going to, but I roll with a girl who tapped me out like, like 10 times in, yeah. in a five minute span yeah, and nice. was taking requests in Portuguese from the other guys around <laughs> laughing at me as she uh, was, she's like, Boa, I go, I go, I show yeah. and they're like, you know, this was that. and then she'd do a triangle. She's like, I told you, I'm like, oh dude, like girls, girls have fucked me up. So I, I, my, I've gone past that ego thing of being, yeah. being choked out by a girl, but it can still be weird if they're, if they're attractive. Yeah. It's, uh, you know, it's, well, jujitsu has got so popular out here too. And now I'm starting to see a transition into like Muay Thai. A lot yeah. of people are doing Muay Thai and, and MMA and, um, you know, well, how, how long have you been training jujitsu? Well, uh, jujitsu, I've been training probably I still need to 15 go with years. Um, and Muay Thai, uh, uh five, six years before that. Mm -hmm. so, um, it's, yeah, I've been training way too long to be as shitty as I am. <laughs> do you ever do competitions? Ever I did, I, I've done, I've done like Muay Thai smokers and I've done jujitsu competitions. I've never done MMA. I never combined, but I'm not a fighter. Yeah. And I mean that by like my mentality. Um, you would have to, you would have to be trying to kill me or someone around me for me to like purposefully hurt yeah. I well, don't want to do that. Those fighters are a different breed. It's a I, different thing. Yeah. yeah. I, when I was at the fights this weekend, uh, I was talking to one of the guys. He he fights, but he wasn't fighting uh, on that card. And uh, they were like, have you ever come and trained with us? Did this? And I was like, nope. I was yeah. like, I, when I was 18, I had a guy that uh, I grew up wrestling with. And he, he actually became a professional fighter. And he invited me out to uh, go train with him one time. And we're sparring, doing this. And then they're like, all right, it's like an open spar, like light spar. And someone leg kicked me so hard i was like fuck this yeah. and i left i never went back i was like i'm, I'm not doing that leg leg kicks are life-changing yeah the oh right, i went the down right person leg kicking you you go like oh wait what are we doing well and, <laughs> and if you go to a fight live yeah. uh, it's so much different than watching it on tv when you see that leg swell up and get red and and, and it's sound you, oh yeah sound. it's brutal and uh, yeah it's it, uh it'll change your life yeah you, i uh yeah no it's it's a different like i also like i know I'm good enough and I've trained enough to know how much I'm not good in the, let me give you a perfect example. I went to uh, um, a Muay Thai fight in Las Vegas and I remember Kevin, uh, Kevin Ross was fighting and I have been liver shot a dozen times in my life. And I, you get a liver shot. I, I go Ugh! and I oh, fall on down. the ground. Yeah. And I'm like, Phew! and even good fighters will be like, we, 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 I, we understand. Yeah. Go, breathe it off like and i'm like Ugh! and i watch i watch kevin ross like twice get but kick and but right to the liver and he's just like Hit, and he kept on fighting i'm like oh that's a <laughs> it's a different yeah thing it's a different world you know yeah i i'm you know whenever i'm watching the ufc fights with friends or anything it's it's laughable to hear them talk like they know what's going on in there it's weird and the, the only thing in the world that guys do that too because guys are dumb yeah but you don't watch the NBA or the NFL or Major League Baseball. No normal person goes, I think I could do that. <laughs> you, know, you don't understand. Yeah. I'm so gifted athletically. I could probably throw 95 with movement or I could jack yeah. a homer. No no one does that. No one's yeah. like, I could, I could dunk. But fighting, it's like guys are like, you don't understand, dude. I'm a tough guy. I've been around the block. It's like. No, nah. you wouldn't even get close to that human being. They would yeah. fucking hit you eight times, yeah. double leg you, and you're it's, it's over. Yeah, I got my nice uh, reminder. I was starting to get like, you know, I don't fight. I don't get into. I, I usually actively avoid problems and stuff. Uh, but when I went and rolled with Nicky Rod and his brother Jay, yeah, and that That's a terrible it was just a, a nice reminder that I like. There's, I'm not even close to being a tough person compared to that. <laughs> Like it's, it's, it, that's a, by the way, that's a terrible intro to do. Yeah. I'm 
compared to Earth, I'm yeah. good. And rolling with them, it's like the the, the violence. And the aggression to which way they will smash you to the ground and, and submit. And they were teaching me too. Yeah. So that was like, oh, this is just teaching. I don't even want to know what it's like to actually compete. <laughs> so. I also think that I have a certain sympathy to, um, you know, how women will talk like, you don't know what it's like uh, to, to be scared. You uh-huh. Walk around and be scared and, and I, or walk back to your car after work. And I go, you're, you're right. But I kind of, I, I can empathize because yeah. I've had men make me feel utterly helpless. Yeah. I, uh, Tim Kennedy's like, oh, could yeah. easily rape me and I can I, there's zero stopping him, <laughs> yeah. you know, and Nikki yeah. Rotter, uh, Gordon. I remember my old coach, Orlando Sanchez, God rest his soul. He, he, uh, he could, he could easily take me and my yeah. mouth and my butthole. And, and, and there's, I, there's <laughs> zero stop. If I don't have a gun, I'm not stopping him. Yeah. You know? Yeah, no, that's, that's the terrifying thing too. And I think that actually is an important reason why people should, uh, and I'm starting to see it grow as a, um, more of a popular thing, but should, get into training, yeah. like should learn how to grapple, how to strike fight because worlds get fucking crazy and yeah. things like that. You know, you're seeing a surge in like just attacks and random attacks and stuff. And I think it's important for people to not only carry, but know how to defend themselves. Yeah. And especially, um, especially you dudes, I think jujitsu is probably the best for females yeah. because I've trained with really high level female Muay Thai fighters, really high level. And, in a in a life or death situation, a guy accosts you on the street. The chances of you spinning around and head kicking a dude is almost zero. Yeah. Even if you're it's like my dream high level yeah. one. I've trained with girls who are like uh, like champions in one right yeah. now. Um, don't get me wrong; they technically they're way better than me. Destroyed me, but the chances if I like if I came up from the side and I grabbed them by the neck and I wanted to throw, that that a lot of that gets thrown away. A girl who's like a, a really good brown belt, you could save your life. Yeah. He, it really could save. Uh, your life if some shit popped off, you know? Yeah. Well, and I think it is important for girls because girls are more, uh, at least in my opinion, I mean, who knows what what I'm talking about, but like, I think girls, when it comes to defending themselves are probably going to have a higher success rate in like choking someone out or like defending jujitsu wise versus striking a man. Yeah. Cause, uh, and I, you know, and I empathize with them too. Uh, kind of what you were saying was back when I used to bounce, yeah. I'd have to walk them to their car and there'd just be some weird Joe Schmo out there waiting like, he really thought they were into her. And I'm like, yeah. they were working you, dude. Like, yeah. fuck hitting tips. And so, but uh, I always encourage uh, all the women to start carrying. I'm like, it's Texas. Yeah. Like, That's a, it's a weird thing, too, that, like, a lot of the girls who are the most uh, vocal for feminist rights yeah. are the least Very supportive anti-gun. of gun. Yeah. Because I go, like, my sister, my sister married LAPD, and she's been carrying a gun in California for as long as I can know. And because of, you know, you're, that level's... A lot of playing fields. Yeah. You know, like, <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. You know, like, You're very equal at that point. Yeah. yeah. So, no. But, um, so kind of switching gears, you know, you, you, one of the things that I've enjoyed hanging out with you too is when we train. Mm-hmm. I've learned so much. And so, no, thanks, you know, man. when we do like the shoulder workouts and uh, we get the little Friday pumps going, yeah. those are fun. But, you know, <laughs> You, you actually have a pretty extensive history and training from, you know, you used to compete in bodybuilding, um, you know, and you do jujitsu and you just, you're always hustling. Every time we talk, you're always doing something crazy. But yeah. um, what have you with noticed? Fi- with physical stuff, I am. I'm Because I, I, I wouldn't describe myself, especially because now that I know, like, really ambitious. You're a very ambitious guy. I'm not that guy. I never really have been. But it, with physical culture, I am, I am con- I constantly feel the need to, like, express myself. Yeah. Well, and tr- for me, training, not, you know, uh, I do get a lot of uh, shit for having a company called Austin Fitness Community, but I'm not like some superstar fitness athlete. You know, I see these guys out here that uh, are hybrid training, running, you know, you got like the Nick Bears and stuff who are just complete an- he's, guys he's like him. He's an animal. Yeah, but Nick Bears are fucking, yeah, I, but I train to decompress stress. That's like, it's the thing that kind of keeps me happy. I like feeling good. Looking- well, and also it's very important people recognize the word fitness is vague yeah. as shit. What are we measuring that by? Mm-hmm. Like, okay, you're not a champion power lifter and you don't have six pack abs, but f- what's your aerobic capacity? What is your heart rate? Yeah. Like the fitness people need to really get a lot more uh, specific when they're talking about fitness, you know, cause I, yeah. you're a fit person by, by everything I would measure you by. Mm-hmm. But like I said, I think a lot of people, especially in this kind of optical world that we live in, 
Mm-hmm. They they're like, well, she's not even that lean. I go, yeah. oh, but maybe she ran. She right. just ran the LA Marathon in three and a half hours. It's <laughs> yeah. like you know, like what do we do? Yeah, <laughs> or a lot of these uh, female powerlifter girls are Dude. in insane shape, and they yeah. they're uh, they're so strong. But some of them are thick. You know, yeah. they just that's just kind of how they they look. But yeah. I was gonna ask you, you know, what are like the the biggest mistakes or flaws you you've noticed in mainstream training today? Because it's become so prevalent on social media you get all these people posting their workouts or you try this try this and for example i saw uh there's this guy uh who kind of reacts to like fad workouts uh you know one where there's like a smith machine where you take like a close grip bar and then you just put press and he's yeah. like that's not doing anything i mean it might be it'd do something and be like it can it can isolate that inner part of the chest but that's if you're building your tr- chest program around that that's a terrible yeah terrible idea you know like i here okay one of the big mistakes people make is like that that's a perfect example for uh, uh to, to to just build around this argument that exercise probably great for sebum to get yeah. ready for the olympia <laughs> when he's really carving out details into his seven percent body fat 250 pound body but then people go and build their training around that which is they're letting the extremes dictate the the, the what should work for the norm in that it's either well, it worked for the guy in the biggest loser <laughs> or it worked for Ronnie Coleman in his peak. I go, yeah, but none of neither of those mean shit to you person yeah. who's just 20 pounds overweight and wants to look better in the mirror. Neither of those things mean a goddamn thing. Yeah. D- to me even. Like I can't look at uh you know, like LeBron's training program right now and be like, yeah, well, let me let me just adopt some principles and say like yeah. and I'm in better shape than 99% of the world, you know? So don't let the extremes dictate because the extremes look cool. Mm-hmm. And what looks cool oftentimes is not going to be useful to you at all. Um, what is really effective is actually kind of boring. Yeah. And I think that that's a, a big problem right now because people are, and it's not a, it's not a, a, a uh, I'm not saying this as a pejorative because people want to make a living, but they're catering a lot of their content to be appealing. Yeah. Right. And that's cool. Good for you. you and, and people are very successful at it. But that oftentimes is not going to translate over to the what really works is really kind of boring. Yeah. It's really fucking boring and shitty. And that's why most people don't achieve mm-hmm. what they want, you know? Yeah. No. Uh, and a lot of the the more mainstream coaches and trainers are just, you know, selling cookie cutter bullshit. Mm-hmm. You know, they're just trying to just get a quick bug, you know, get those clients. And it kind of comes back to the uh, beginning of the conversation where I, I can't be a part of that. I can't promote, you know, cookie cutter horseshit, but you know, what have you noticed versus when you were competing, training, um, you know, kind of today versus the past? Have you, have you noticed anything significant as far as like mainstream training goes? Yeah. Um, I think again, the big, the big factor with everything, not just fitness, we're, we're going to talk about, Hey, when you were 19 versus now, what's the, the difference is the internet, yeah. the internet changed everything. Um, and social media then took it up a notch because now the internet used to just be maybe you'd have a little bit too much decision fatigue because you could go to chat room to chat room to chat room, right? But now with social media, you have decision fatigue and an overwhelming influx of information. On top of that, people are so conscious of their image. Mm-hmm. And I can't say that, I don't know if I was 20 in 2024, if I could, if I could have been as kind of Spartan-like and devoted to what I wanted to do uh, as I was back then because no one gave a shit. No one gave a shit about this kid in Pasadena, California. Mm-hmm. Maybe the the elders that I would turn to for advice, they were helpful and they were, there was a, a community. But outside of that, no one gave a fuck what my deadlift was. No one cared about how chiseled my abs were. Now I think every person, man, woman, old, young, is, is really conscious of like how it's going to appear. Um, so there's that. And the, the other biggest, biggest, biggest problem that and I, I, I bitch and moan about it so much on my podcast is that people get obsessive about new cutting edge training stuff mm-hmm. and then no one puts any amount of effort into the most important thing and that's your diet. Yeah. yeah. I'm not talking about performance. When it comes to looking good in the mirror, diet is so far and away more important than your training, yet people get obsessive about getting the right, perfect, optimal training program, and then they go and they're eating fast food and Grubhub every day, all day. Absolutely, yeah. You know, it's funny is I have a friend, uh, his name's Mario Hill, and he's a bodybuilder, but he does like the natural shows, mm-hmm. but he looks incredible. Mm-hmm. And you would, 
you know, it's so hard to like really be like, oh man, you're like really natural, natural. But then you see him train and he was one of the first friends I made in Texas. Um, and uh, I, I would ask him for like help or tips and he would always just go, well, what are you eating? What's your, what's your food like? What's yeah. this and that? He's like, that's the most important thing. And I, I was eating like shit for a while, but then when I switched it up, huge change. It's, it's, it's remarkable what happens when you're yeah. consistent too. It's not, it's not gonna be two days. It's yeah. take six months to really devote understanding your overall intake and uh, upping your protein and getting your macros kind of where you feel like it's sustainable and, and watch what happens. Uh, it's, it's mesmerizing. And that's what everyone dreams of, right? Is that, that, six months, eight months, maybe a year where you go to work or you go to the pool and people are like, oh my God, you're a different person. Oh yeah. my, what an amazing transformation. And training alone is not going to get you there. And so many people get so frustrated because they're like, I got into CrossFit. I, I I started jogging. I started lifting weights four days a week. And it's mm-hmm. like, and I feel like I haven't really made any. And I was like, yeah, but what are you eating? Yeah. What are you eating? I, I've, I had this story I told, um, it was a, for the first time, only because it sparked my memory of of this happening when justin harris was on my podcast he runs first detachment and uh tropin and nutrition he was he was a huge he still is a huge bodybuilding coach for like the high level Mm -hmm. bodybuilding coaches and he's he's getting people ready for like high level npc shows even ifbb shows and uh i had him on my podcast and we were talking because i i i like to focus in on kind of everyday folks but he's he's gigantic yeah he's Doing a really cool athletic training too. Yeah, and he's he's very athletic for how big he is. He's very athletic for how big he is, and also, um, a, a guy who's just a wizard. He has a, a he has he's a you know was a physics major and and really understands things from from the inside out. But we were talking about it, and I was like, I, I you know I got to tell you this story, and it just dawned on me. And this is one, and this sounds like movie bullshit, but this is one hundred percent true. I was at a wedding for a friend of mine who was really jacked. He was he was a bodybuilder. He was jacked, and he was getting married to his to his wife. Um, and I'm sitting at this table with other meatheads, <laughs> okay? <laughs> and the table's kind of like separated as, you know, after the dinner and everybody's dancing. And everybody, so people, the, the group's conversations go like this, right? This big, long table. And I'm sitting here with these guys. One guy was this uh, black fella. He's like, I forgot his name, but he was like 60, shredded. Mm. Another guy was like this just beautiful man with like abs and and this chick who was like like power lifter but also like really like well-defined view and they're all all of them they're going like this talking 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 talking, talking, talking. and i'm just sitting back <laughs> for the first time in my life not yeah. not spracking off and i'm listening um right now i've really been into uh getting that seven percent lean turkey because i feel like i digest it better even though I, I was going so lean that i felt like i was having digestive trouble dude i totally understand i started adding two more egg yolks into my egg whites in the morning and, I, and it just started helping me out a little bit and i at the other end of the table is like giant perma bulker guys yeah big motherfucker big 250 260 270 but pudgy and i kind of lean over there how much trend are you running right now man? <laughs> yeah but, seriously yeah but uh, yeah as i get uh, closer I'm, I'm gonna start leaning out so i think i'm gonna switch to propanate from sipping yeah. yeah. <laughs> i totally get it bro they're all talking drugs all the sh- amazing looking people they're all talking diet and i was like wow this is that's insane crazy <laughs> like it's a crazy dichotomy man this uh, is how it works dude uh, do you think um you think like a lot of these like um, fitness icons or, or even actors. I was watching your show the other day. You're talking about Reacher. Do you think that they should be more open about their steroid use? Because they're they're fucking full of shit if they're saying they're not. Like guys yeah. like uh, Alan Richardson that yeah. played Reacher, uh, massive, looks incredible. Trying to say he did it all natural that he his testosterone was zero or some yeah. shit. And then uh, even Thor, like Chris Hemsworth. And uh, I was talking to a guy that works. He does a lot of work with the dude that owns like the training app that mm-hmm. Chris has. And I guess they were saying that when they do interviews, like the interviewee, like there's a, a really strict rule that you cannot ask about steroid use or this yeah. or that. And I'm like, you know, if you're going to do it, you should, you shouldn't uh, it, uh, just don't talk about it at all. Like it, don't, don't say that, uh, oh, I did it all natural, this and that. Cause now you're just full of shit and you're misguided, like misleading right. people. I think that that's exactly the solution in my opinion. Either be fully open mm-hmm. when, when and you don't have to go around being a, an exhibitionist. Yeah. You guys run, uh, I'm running a thousand <laughs> milligrams a week, testosterone. No. But uh, if someone directly asks you, I think people should have an obligation for two reasons. One, it's not that big a deal, mm-hmm. especially for older fellows. Like when you're talking about The Rock and Jason Statham, I think that they should be open just from the sake of Mark Wahlberg another good example. Just from the sake of like, like that's not really cheating. No. Like the rock's 50 yeah. <laughs> and he's six, four, two 60 shredded. He should go like, 
in order for me to even be able to do this and live my lifestyle, yeah. I'm on medicine. I'm not geeking out. I don't, but let's be clear. I have to have a doctor monitored uh, hormone protocol in order for me to even do this anymore. Yeah. Um, that being said, I do think that you can achieve so some of the best I've ever looked, I was some of the pictures you posted for Flex Friday. Oh yeah. I was natural for yeah. those. So I do think that there is there is a a middle ground where people can um can can live in that it's not all about the drugs. Um but that being said, I do think it shouldn't be such a taboo. Mm -hmm. And then also I think that people in uh, the uh, on the receiving end of that information, people get so obsessed about natty or not, and they get away. And I go, but here's here's what you're missing: that you, I could give you all the drugs in the world, and you're not going to look like that dude because I've watched that. And Mike O'Hearn's. A, I always use that example because yeah. I used to train at Golds in Venice, and I'd watch Mike O'Hearn at like sixty, fucking crushing to stuff that I go, you know what? I'm not going to train with you. Yeah. You're too hardcore, and with. Bobby Maximus told me a story. He went to dinner with Mike O'Hearn at like a really nice steakhouse in LA. Yeah. It's a steakhouse. You could easily get a clean meal. Psh, brought out the Tupperware. <laughs> Bring me a club soda. He's yeah. got his Tupperware. He's like, yeah, but I don't know how much. So that do you is. think Mike's natural? I don't care. Oh, okay. I don't care. Yeah. I, I, if I if I'm a betting man, no. Yeah. But my, but but what I wanted to get through to people is like, there's so many keyboard warriors that like, if I use gear, I'd look like him. It's like, no, you fucking 100%. wouldn't. No, you wouldn't yeah. look like The Rock. No, you wouldn't look like Jason Statham. Yep. No, you wouldn't because I've seen behind the curtain. Jennifer Aniston's another one. Mm -hmm. Jennifer Aniston goes on vacation. I saw her at a, like a really nice, um, really nice um, resort in Mexico. You know, and uh, I was not trying to creep her. I was like, holy shit, it's Jennifer Aniston. Yeah. No. And, I saw her at three or four different points around it, at the pool, at the beach, at the, she's got fucking perfectly measured food with her. Yeah. Okay. Like there's, there's a grind you have to live, live by to do that shit. And, uh, so that's where I do get upset about like the idea of drugs. Now, that being said, I do want to get that message out there. A lot of people that are making paychecks on their physiques, yeah. athletes or phys uh, physique athletes, models, actors, Drugs is a big deal. Yeah. It's a big part of it, you know? So don't, I don't want to misguide people to think that that, that isn't a component because it absolutely is. Yeah, you know? yeah and I, I couldn't agree more. I do uh, really think that when they own it, it's like it almost just kind of move on from it. You're kind of like, yeah. But one, one thing you said that I couldn't agree with more is that oh, most of the people I know, you know, I'm friends with a lot of these Olympians, mm -hmm. bodybuilders, um, and, and you nailed it on the head is that, yeah, they're on gear, but if you ever see them train, yeah, they're working out harder than probably anyone you know or have ever met. I mean, I've I've trained with some some like guys like you're saying, like Michael Hearn. Like I've trained with uh, even the female bodybuilders, Dude. and they're insane. Yeah, I mean, they just keep going and going and going. And uh, in this case, like anabolics is just a supplement for them. Yeah, and and I think a lot of people. Uh, you know, I got my start. I actually started all this through working in, for a supplement company, mm -hmm. uh, or it was a nutrition store, but we, you know, I learned a lot about supplements yeah, and in-house brands. Yeah. yeah. Well, in-house and then third-party brands. And, you know, I just, I started learning a lot about, um, the supplements and that's, can be a very misleading industry too. Oh, I, I, I my, I like Nick bear, Justin Harris. Mm -hmm. I love, I want to promote always people who do it right because that industry is Almost it's, exclusively snake oil sales. Yeah. Shitty yeah. assholes who are taking your money for nothing. Like so, when people yep. do it right, I'm always like, "Hey, good for you, man." Yep. Are there um, are there ones you like? Like, uh, do you have like a preference on any supplements? Brands or, or like supplements themselves? Them themselves. I do. I think look like I train and eat like I live in 1940. Okay. You know, I, I'm a big believer in that. Like, I'm not I anti machine. I do a lot of machines and cables and stuff. But um, oh, I know. I, I I'll <laughs> go. I'll like for me get some good fish oil. And some creatine monohydrate. Don't waste your money on like elaborate creatines, like really good creatine monohydrate. Super creatine. Yeah. Bam. I mean, I'm not saying those things aren't good. Maybe they work, but but the 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 research is there with like Crea Pure German creatine, yeah. just regular old monohydrate. It works. And um, so that and fish oil and some vitamin D, maybe yeah. if you're lucky, not lucky enough to live in a really sunny area and get out, you know, with your, your shirt off and stuff. To me, that's all you really need. And you just double down on making your your diet work yeah. you know what i'm saying like are there are there supplements that you think that are just kind of a waste of time yeah tons i mean like, too many honestly too many to to list like one that um what is it i'm i'm uh, blanking on the word but it's like a it's supposed to be a like a fat 
burner. It's like an amino though. Um, L-carnitine? L-carnitine, yeah. yeah. And one of the things, I have uh, a good friend of mine, his name's Tyler Fluid. Dude's so smart. Yeah. But we were talking about, uh, he will often go on his like social media and like provide information. He does a lot of research. He's really smart. And uh, one of the things I learned was that like uh, L-carnitine is really effective It's if taken as an injectable. Oh, I bet. Yeah. And versus, and there's like there's companies now that are doing that. I heard CLA is the same way. Conjugated yeah. linoleic yeah. acid. Yeah. This is a fatty acid, and I, I mm-hmm. think there's been some some uh, proof that it may work for fat burning uh, as a di- uh, yeah. when it's digested. Most but linoleic I think acid. Uh, a lot of people have been seeing success with injectable. Yeah. Yeah. yeah there's a, a company called uh, Amino Asylums that has mm-hmm. a lot of this stuff, and I don't even know if like it's legal or not, but they've been around for a while. So. Yeah, I, I said, look, fish oil, creatine, and and and, and vitamin D. I'm not saying that there's yeah. not other supplements yeah. that aren't really effective. Yeah. I'm just saying like, if I'm going to spend my money on something, oh, another mm-hmm. one I would say is uh, a lot of people don't. Now this is different. If you're a regular dude or regular gal, mm-hmm. this might not play. But if you're, if you've achieved a certain level of horsepower and you want to keep making gains, I think Perry workout nutrition is something everyone should do either pre-workout or peri-workout nutrition because everyone's into the caffeinated stimulant pre-workout mm-hmm. but then they go in there with empty blood and if yeah. you can get some like essential amino acids and some cyclic dextrin in your system to help you train like really improve it's noticeable improvement in your training ability mm-hmm. and that can that can really i really like cancer. vasodilators like mm-hmm. um any type of like nitric oxide Just- I, I will tell you this i'm being very honest because i agree I can't take them because I always get boners. <laughs> well, I mean, that's technically what boner pills are. That's what so. I think. That's what where they came to the conclusion that because yeah. isn't that what Viagra did? Is it increase circulation yeah, to the? Yeah, once you get stimulated down there, it increases blood flow. So to, I I I'm already on the press. I'm always on the precipice of boner. Yeah, as is. I'm a very charged up dude. Um, <laughs> I'm, I'm not dangerously so. I yeah. mean, I like to I like to think that I've never made women feel uncomfortable, but I, Just so a so. gym, especially at a gym around Austin or in Southern California, like a higher level gym, mm-hmm. there's so many hot chicks wearing absolutely, you know, wearing their ass floss doing RDLs. And it's like, if I have also something that's increasing circulation, like yeah. I, I have to stop working out cause it's embarrassing. Cause I have like that, like seventh grade, you gotta, you know, gotta dance go sit boner. down. Yeah, I'm seventh grade dance band. I've like like gym shorts on, so yeah. it's like, what am I? Oh, fuck! <laughs> it makes it really hard to train. Yeah. yeah, yeah, no, that one's that one's my favorite. But yeah, one of the things I learned a lot when I was working in the supplement world was um, just how deceptive it can be. You yeah. know, and, and that's kind of why it comes full circle with like why I think anyone on gear should be a lot more transparent. Uh, I've yes. never liked I've never liked that like take my uh, protein or my aminos and look like me. Yeah. Uh, I've, I've, I've I've hated that. And, I, I think yeah no. Um, and they're supplements; they're not substitutes. You know, I think a lot of the consumers are often misled by that ideology. Where supplements, I used to say this all the time when I worked at the store, was supplements are supposed to supplement what you already produce. Yeah. They're not substitutes. They're not going to replace. They're not magic pills or powders. Well, like cre- look at the three I named, okay? Vitamin yeah. D, creatine, and fish oil. A certain level of amino acids in your bloodstream is irrefutably positive for mm-hmm. your health, okay? But most of us are not going to eat fish like an Okinawan. We're not going to get that much fish from your <laughs> yeah. diet. So what do you yeah. do? You supplement, right? Yep. Vitamin D. There's, this is irrefutable, but most people are not even going to consider it a mineral anymore. It's more of a hormone. It's that important, right? Yeah. To every, most all cellular functions, but most of us are not getting enough sunlight naturally. So what do you do? You supplement mm-hmm. creatine monohydrate, creatine monohydrate. It, again, irrefutable that it works. You can eat so much beef and still not get enough circulating creatine, creatine in the system. So yeah. I like to regulate, I like to uh, relegate it to things that I just simply can't get enough of in my diet, you know, yep. fill in those gaps. Yeah, no, absolutely. I mean, supplement, yeah. <laughs> yeah. you're just supplementing it. And so, uh, you know, one of the things I see too, and, and I'm guilty of it as well is in fitness now, especially as it's become more mainstream and it's become something that everyone, you know, wants to be a part of is trying to balance your health and wellness lifestyle with your social. And, and there's, now there's like these new fads with like healthy alcohol. And I know yeah. someone is who's been Fuck sober. Off. Yeah. It's uh, you know, that's gotta be uh frustrating to see. I always see people like, Oh, this is healthy. This is a healthy drink. Like yeah. this is fine. And I'm like, no, just don't drink. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Or, or, yeah. or, or regulate your, 
if you're not an alcoholic, then drink like an adult. Yeah. And don't try to don't try to sell me on a six pack a night is perfectly fine. No, so it's not. Fuck calories. Fuck yeah. your body. Fuck your 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 physique. No, it's not. You're a grown adult. Like you shouldn't be needing to detach yourself from reality that yeah. much, can, that consistently. Yeah. I, and I I, 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 I always like to remind people, the caveat is I'm in recovery and I hate people who get clean and then go around telling people how to yep. live your life. No, you work hard. You're a grown adult. You should be able to blow off steam yep. when you need it, but you shouldn't have to blow off steam every, every night. Yeah. That, that's a problem. Yeah. You know, you're an alcoholic and that's or, or, a or your, your life is so fucking miserable that you need that you feel like you need a buzz every night that's you examine yeah. they may not necessarily be a, a clinical alcoholic but examine what's going on where you feel like you just got to escape that much yeah. man because escape is not necessarily a good thing man you know no. here in short bursts vacation suite yep t- 12 vacations a, mo- a year is not there's something going on in your personal life back home you yeah. know i think for me the peak uh i had a really bad problem drinking when uh everything had shut down covid wise yeah that's when i think I, a lot of people did yeah i mean i would just i you know when the government basically took my purpose away and i couldn't work and i lost everything and i, I had all these problems like i i would wake up and i would just pound drinks down just ho- waiting for the day to end yeah you know and things like that but then once things started to open up uh, i was able to like kick it and and kind of focus more on training and health and getting everything back together. But for a lot of people, yeah, drinking is a crutch. It's, it's pretty sad to watch. And now there's, we're moving into a new stream of where, uh, you know, one thing I get tired of is the overuse of the term normalize. Yeah. So it's like, if you have to normalize something, it's probably not normal. Yeah. And, uh, so trying to like integrate alcohol and other drugs, you know, or, uh, I, I know a lot of people that smoke weed before they work out, which I, I could never do a bunch, uh, bunch of jujitsu guys do. Yeah. It's a very, very, yeah. uh, which I mean, that's a preference. Yeah. Like I, I don't know if weed is effective or ineffective when training, but, uh, I, a lot, I a lot of it. people think, and I, I, there's, this seems very reasonable. A lot yeah. of people think that it makes them much more in touch with all of their body. Like they, 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 oh. they can have a better sense of like mind touch. muscle connection. Yeah. Okay. And, and same with jujitsu, like they, their, their movements and things, they just feel more in control of it. And that makes a lot of sense. To yeah. Me. yeah. That, okay. I understand. I, it's for me, it's like, I think everyone has different experiences with, mm-hmm. uh, just any type of drug like that. Chemi- chem- let, dude, people hate to drug the word drug. Like yeah. we're talking about chemicals that alter your, your physical, ma- yeah. your chemical makeup themselves. Uh, caffeine is a drug just like methamphetamine is yeah. and, uh, alcohol drugs are drugs. Alcohol is a, yeah. dr- it's, these are drugs. Okay. And they are going to affect you in a certain way. Some people, uh, here's a, here's a very interesting one that I recognize, um, being in recovery for so long. I know so many people in recovery that get very heavily into fitness. Okay. Yeah. Because it's, it seems like a, a real good trade off. Yeah. You have a lot of, un, uh, a lot of like unkempt energy. All of my brothers and sisters in recovery that are opioid addicts or, or, or big, big uh, potheads all got into like endurance sports and outdoorsy. Like they're re- yeah. like a lot of them, a lot of them become uh, long distance runners, jujitsu guys. Okay. All my stimulant and alcoholic friends, Muay Thai powerlifting, <laughs> yeah. you know, uh, CrossFit. Like it's it's all about. Uh, I need yeah. to feel that. Go go go. I wonder if there's a connection between because usually with like alcohol and stimulants, you could say there's a connection to aggressiveness. It, there, and those well, are very I think, aggressive. I think what it is is chemically that you respond to. I will tell you. Mm-hmm. I when I moved to the East Coast, it was 1999, 2000. Meth just wasn't a thing there. And I loved smoking meth. I loved smoking crack. I loved the feeling of being up. I loved it. I loved getting hammered and then doing bumps, smoking crack, and just being like, ah, I, that was what I felt. I didn't like opiates. I mean, it was better than nothing. It was better than being sober. But I remember all these dudes, I was like, yeah, yeah, well, I got some pills, bro. We could take some pills. And then I take them, and I'm like, I mean, it was fun. Yeah. I might, I might need less whiskey, but, like, can we get some bumps? You yeah. Know? And it was like my yeah. body didn't respond to it and mm-hmm. and it's weird i heard tom arnold talk about it on love line one time he said i loved doing cocaine because it was the first thing that made me chill out and i was like dude you're the first person i've ever heard say because most people yeah. they get talk a mile a minute stimulants made me balanced yeah i have a, a comedian friend uh i won't say who but he was telling me that um that he he prefers cocaine because it, he says it mellows him out. He goes, all you youngsters, you guys are always like, you're speed freaks. You're all trying to like, you know, go a thousand miles an hour. He's like, I do this to 
bring I, myself down. I felt balanced. Yeah. And so, yeah, I agree with that fellow as well. And I think that's, this is outside my pay grade, but I think that's why they treated ADHD with stimulants. Yeah. Because it doesn't make much sense. You would think a kid's overactive, a stimulant would be the word. But I guess if the chemistry is right, it brings you down. I was, a, I, I, all my friends would be good. <laughs> chattering their teeth yeah. and i would be in the club right. and i'd be like finally i feel like i'm gonna go talk to this girl yeah. i'd be like hey what's up my name is mike nice yeah. to meet you and because other oh sorry otherwise i was that kid i was that kid that just couldn't sit still in class yeah same i i got demonized growing up for that for having too much energy and being wild and and i've heard uh i've actually heard rogan talk about it, where like kids are are just balls of energy they're yeah. not supposed to just be you know locked into a seat for seven hours a day or yeah. eight hours a day you know they're uh that's why i kind of like tim's apogee school yep. program my daughter know. went there that's what we moved to to austin oh for. really i didn't know that that's she, why she here, transferred right? away uh nothing against the aperture but my daughter is pretty weird and she got <laughs> accepted into a stem school like a stem oh, specific yeah. school and she loves it and she went so but but my daughter went to apogee and here's here's another thing when you're talking about kids in school and apogee i think does a great job of uh of, of dealing with this i'm very pro trans rights I'm very, I think this is a, this is the United States of America. We're based on freedom. Mm -hmm. And if you're a grown man and you want to be a woman, that's your business and go for it. Um, But with that, we should not deny real biology. And a restless little boy is a whole different ball game than a (laughs) restless little girl. A restless little boy cannot, you cannot, that's imprisoning a little boy by putting him in a classroom for seven hours and being like, just shut the fuck up and sit still. <laughs> yeah. Like a lot of little boys uh, cannot, you're, 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 you're I internal. was one of those little boys. Yeah. And I think most little boys are, and most little girls are also have a lot of energy and they shouldn't be necessarily seated for seven hours or eight hours, but there's an intellectual curiosity that comes with being a little girl that they can go like, huh, really? You know, let me yeah. tell me more about that. And little boys are like, ah, this yeah. is so fucking boring. <laughs> <laughs> so true. Yeah. No, I mean, I, when I was a kid, I had so much energy and, uh, I just, I was curious minded. I, I would just go on quests all the time as a kid and, yeah. and me and my friends were just full of energy. And I, I always, it used to piss me off that I was, I would be like reduced to, oh, you must have, uh, an attention, attention deficit disorder, this or that. And I'm like, yeah. no, I'm just a curious child. Yeah. And fortunately, my parents never subscribed to the ideology of like putting me on pharmaceuticals. Yeah. Um, and I, I grew out of it. And it's like, I, I didn't really do that well in high school. But then when I got to college, I was I was killing it in college. Yeah, it it, just it's because like it... I chose what I wanted to, to learn. And, and um, you know, I had, uh, you know, incentives to be there. And I was choosing to go. And, and I was, it adopted a lot or I adapted a lot more to, the the open endedness of it, you know, if I want to leave class, I could. I wasn't required to stay, and yeah, uh, it was cool. But yeah, yeah, schooling now and just education overall is getting really flimsy. You know, there's a lot of uh, misinformation for everything, whether it's fitness, whether it's education, so you know, social um, priorities or politics. It's kind of a bizarre time right now. And, well, yeah, and, and there's I mean, getting back to that same thing we were talking about with porn. Um, or I should say corn, right? Because I don't want to get you in trouble on. Dude, uh, I no, we're an open platform. We can talk about whatever. Um, so it's the same thing, you know, with adult entertainment. Your the barrier of entry is so much different. And I'm not a fan of the traditional media in the sense that I, I think it was, you know, it's bought and sold. Mm-hmm. But you know, before the internet, there was a standard that journalists had to live up yeah. to. And you could, everything was lost if you print, rushed to print something that wasn't necessarily fully true. Yeah. I just and, got clickbait. And that went for serious things like mm-hmm. the Vietnam War, and it went for very unsignif- insignificant things like fitness, okay? Mm-hmm. Um, but you could kind of, barring some like magazines and publications that were, again, they were just, they were just uh, yeah, adverti- never- advertisement arms. But, but for the, I'm talking about journalism and the news there was a certain standard you had to hold yourself to. And unfortunately that, that standard has been broken. And, and we, it was like, I was saying like, I can't for the life of me understand why this girl that I saw this morning working out, who's like soft and floppy <laughs> is got her tripod and everything. But I was like, well, if she's giving fitness advice, yeah, well, we, we're just in the wild west, right? It just, you can, anyone can say anything. Yeah. Like, you know, so. it's, it's, it's bizarre. I wish, you know, it's kind of like why, uh, uh, I, I catch hell sometimes for, uh, defending being friends with the goob who, yeah. uh, you'll meet this weekend. I actually, I think he's going to be on the show this week. Um, 
but he, one of the things that I've, I've, I always say on the show too, is one of my goals with what I have here in the expo and all that is to reshift the focus back onto honesty and integrity yeah. in the fitness industry. I feel like it's gotten infected. You know, it's, it's, we have a virus right now called materialism where there's just, it doesn't matter what's being displayed as long as, you know, people are chasing likes, they're chasing views. They don't actually care about what they're putting out. And now there's like all this deceptive um, ways that people get videos. There's the clickbait headlines, there's all this. And I'm like, dude, when I was growing up, we idolized individuals based off their credibility and what they achieved, not just because they had a big following. Right. And it's so bizarre that that's what people prefer. I'll meet companies that will be like, oh, I'm, we're going to go work with this advertiser, this company, clearly fake following, no engagement, no nothing. It's very easy to find, but all they see is that follower count and, and that somehow is their market. And a lot of these companies now, their entire marketing plan, um, all in the health and wellness space and, and outside of that is, you know, social media, I always say it's uh, it's a tool, not a crutch. Yeah. And their entire business model is around social media. And it's like, dude, you're trying to play into a, a rigged system. Well, and a perception being bigger than reality is, is, a, yeah. is a real problem. I, I, I dealt with it on a much smaller level on a micro scale, you know, spending years uh, going to red carpets yeah. in Los Angeles with uh, the K Rock mic flag on, okay, mm -hmm. which means I'm at the back of the mic. Uh, I'm at the back of the red carpet, and every celebrity and every publicist for said celebrity sees that, and they go, huh, "Let's go pass by there." Yeah. Then I started working at Entertainment Tonight and Access Hollywood and everything. Now I'm at the front, and literally people, the publicists are like pushing people out of the way to get to me, right? Same guy. Yeah. Same person. <laughs> uh, I actually probably would have done a better interview at K-Rock because I didn't have these fucking forced on me bullshit uh, cue cards that, yeah. you know, producers would send. And they're like, make sure you get to Julia Roberts. She just had a new kid. I was like, in my head, I'm like, that's the last thing she wants to talk about. Like, yeah. Maybe. Can I ask her about uh, trying to live life as Julia Roberts, not sleeping because she has a newborn yeah. and it's like probably driving her fucking crazy. And she wants to throw her kid out the window because she has like 11 things to do in a day. Uh, and they're like, no, 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 just ask, tell her she looks beautiful. Cause she just had a baby. I was like, I would have said that anyway. Yeah. <laughs> like she does look beautiful. She's fucking Julia Roberts, you know? Like, so it's yeah. weird. I don't know that, that, yeah. that, but you know, same dude got the, uh, access Hollywood mic flag. Now everyone's bending, tripping over themselves to get to talk to me. I was at the back of the six months ago. I was with K Rock, and then no, and they're like, "No, fuck that." Yeah. Who knows what that guy's gonna ask? And I was like, "But I'm the I'm the same human." But yeah, you know. no, I feel the same way. I mean, there's there's sometimes where though I'll go some places where I'm no one, yeah, and then I'll go back and I'll be with it was, you know, I could even say like the time we went to that show. You yeah. know, I've been there a hundred times. Who am I? I yeah. go there and now I'm upstairs. Now everyone's like being super nice, want to be my friend. I'm like, you guys wouldn't give me the time of day. Last time I was here. So it's, I get it, but it's, you know, those are things I don't like. And uh, I want to try to uh, play a role in, in reshifting the focus back to honesty, integrity, just being nice to people, you know. There's and, a, there's a lot of value to that, man. Like, you know. I mean, I even said the other day, uh, I trained with a bunch of cops at, at uh, Gracie Humaita in Cedar Park. Um, I think Tim brings a lot of law enforcement and a lot of uh, yeah. veterans and stuff. And they were talking about how people have a, such a different attitude towards police. Every and just, yeah. just I'm actually gonna uh, on the separate show. I'm having a cop on um, my buddy Jeff. He uh, was a Medal of Valor recipient, which mm. is like one of the highest honors you get as a first responder. Yeah, and uh, yeah, we're gonna we're gonna bring up a lot of that stuff about why cops get a bad you know rep out here and and a lot of the stuff and kind of get his perception on it. As someone who works in the media. I will say this, and I'm, I'm this is dangerous territory. Mm -hmm. I mean, I'm, but I want people to really listen to what I'm saying. I'm not trying to shit on teachers. I, by no means am I shitting yeah. on teachers. But uh, I've worked at new, in news media at all different levels at AM talk radio. Mm -hmm. where I have to fill a lot of time. I've been on the panel shows on CNN, HLN, all the whole thing. You you have to go out of your way to push aside this mountain of stories of shit going on with teachers so that you can get to the one, two stories a, a month of some shit that goes on with cops. Yeah. But yet everyone loves, like, just trash. And you're talking about how, how many cops are there in the United States? How many law enforcement members? I mean, 
fifty thousand. Let's say I'm off the top of my head. I don't know. No, that's probably a lot more. You can Google it. How many uh, and how many interactions do they have on a day to day basis over a three hundred sixty five day period? The amount of stuff we hear, like it's actually phenomenal how yeah. good a job law enforcement does on a day in a day out basis. Okay, but it's cool to bag on cops, just like it's cool to bag on attorneys, even though one out of a hundred times an attorney fucks you over 99 times. They're the first person to come. That guy or gal is going to save your ass. If you don't know anything about the law yeah. and you got a DUI, like, or whatever, you know, that attorneys save our ass most of the time, but it's really yeah. fun to make fun of attorneys, you know, like, um, uh. and it's just, it's weird, but these cops are talking to me and they were talking about like people interacting. And now because, of the internet and like people are automatically almost everyone's filming and they're like, Hey, we're filming. We have body yeah. cams. You know? And I said, you know, I gotta be honest. I, they, they asked me a question. What about when a cop does it? And I go, I gotta be honest. I, my interactions with police are delightful yeah. all the time, yeah. you know? And these two guys are like, Oh yeah, it's cause you're a really nice guy. And I go, really? Like, yeah. Well, I was like, well, I try, I try yeah. to be nice to people on a moment to moment basis. And, you got to wonder, maybe you're not getting some immediate reward for being the nice guy, right? But at the end of the day, the cumulative effect of how e much easier it probably makes your life. Yeah. Because like I said, I could count on one hand in 45 years how many times I could remember someone being kind of a jerk to me. Mm -hmm. Most of the people are really nice to me. People treat me yeah. great. People treat me great online. I can't believe that. Yeah. No one really, I mean, every once in a while, someone will say some horrible shit. What was it uh, Friday, the filter? Don't, someone tell me, don't post yeah, that guy, You know what? That guy wasn't even talking shit. Yeah. That guy had a that's compelling argument. That guy, that's If that's the most negative, like, yeah. you're doing pretty good. Yeah, like, that guy wasn't even talking <laughs> shit. He was just saying, like, I feel like that it sets unrealistic standards. And I engage with that guy, because yeah. I don't like to engage with people. If people are going to just talk shit, um, it, actually, I'm actually glad you brought that up because you did the Flex Friday thing for the Austin fitness community and he put pictures of me and this guy commented, he said, you know, I, I don't think you should put up overly filtered pictures um, because it gives people false expectations, okay? Yeah. And if it was, if it was like, you're not that lean, you fucking suck, I would have been like, okay, and moved on. Yeah. But because he said something, it wasn't just, it wasn't just errant shit talking. Yeah. He was making a, a constructive piece of criticism. And I was like, you know what? That's funny you say that. I, I, I kind of see where you're coming from. I think it's valuable to manage people's expectations. But I'm also, I'm not realistic. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> I'm not a real, I, so I don't think I have to, uh, I have yeah. any obligation to give off realistic expectations because I'm not a realist. I, uh, uh, as a 45 year old with a kid and a family and a career and everything, and a like, farm. it's not, I'm not realistic. Yeah. I, you know, when you take into consideration 25 years of like pretty consistent training and dieting and drugs and the whole, I'm, I'm not, mm -hmm. really, so I don't, but I'm more than happy to engage with that. Cause that was a real piece of, that was something that thoughtful. He wasn't just lobbing bombs, you know? Yeah. Well, and he didn't like just troll after that, but you know, now, now that you're settled in Austin, um, you know, do you have uh, like what's kind of the the game plan moving forward? Do you have like anything coming up? Any goals that you're trying to work towards? As far as whether you stay in media, are you going to try to move more into the jujitsu realm? Like anything related to fitness world, things like that. I mean, I, I think fitness, off the top of my head, has to be what I've been focusing on mostly, and it's only because of well, there's a couple of reasons. One. Imagine if, like, if we, we were talking to a comic, right? Yeah. And uh, you're like, okay, you've worked for 20 years doing your job, and you've gotten really good at, you know, you set up your jokes, your your stage presence great, your crowd works great, and everything. Okay, I need to let you know, now the business is completely different. None of that matters. Yeah. <laughs> Here's how you do it now. Yeah. And it's like, oh, you, you have to face away from the crowd and everything. I worked in radio and in, in broadcasting and television for 20 years. And then I've got to this point now where it's like, well, none of that matters. Yeah. <laughs> and so I have to yeah. think about how I can pivot best and not bitch and moan, not bitch yeah. and moan about it, but it's just, that's reality. Mm -hmm. Like it's a different game. Um, and so I, I have to figure out how I can best pivot. And I think that that is the one thing I can do where it won't drive me crazy because I do think I'm pretty good at the kind of, social issues, political issues, discussion. But that, since 2016-ish, it, it makes me mad. It, great, yeah. it makes me crazy because I can't say anything without people just getting so angry. And I don't, I can't live in that world yeah. where I'm where I'm pariah guy. I'm, a, I'm friends with uh, 
you know who Blair White is? Huh? Yeah. So Blair, for people that don't know, is a, like a really controversial but popular trans, uh, like conservative uh, analyst. I, and I don't even think Blair will even claim conservative. Yeah. Uh, more common sense. He's like he, he or she. She. I, she. I always say Blair and the she. Like, okay. And the thing, too, is like Blair is one of those people that you can talk to and not worry about. Sitting like, on landmines. Yeah. yeah. And you can ask questions. You know, I think there's a lot of curious minds out there related to the the trans uh, topic and but if you if you question it or yeah. you even have a curiosity or if you sound like you're gonna uh go against the narrative you, you they eat you alive they attack yeah, you though, but with I, blair so that and that uh, it's unfortunately i think so much of that in the trans community is kind of ruining the idea of trans altogether because no. um there's something more there than just gender dysphoria when everything everyone says is offensive because yeah. i have pretty close uh, trans friends, or I will say that I don't want to BS everyone. I have very close trans acquaintances mm -hmm. that I've gotten to know through media. And regardless of the direction they've gone with their transition and the point in their life, they're, they're not so uptight about it. They're like, oh, yeah, it's pretty wild. Yeah. This is pretty wild. I was born a guy and now I'm committed to being a woman. Dude, and as for you and I, us three, we're like, oh, that's whoa yeah. that is wild well and you know, it, it like, kind of comes back to what you said earlier where it's like do whatever you want like, yeah i don't care it's just when people attack me for just not even acknowledging the world you know their worldview it's just like that's that's how you turn people against you it's funny i i grew up in a pretty gay friendly world in los angeles county east side of los angeles and mm -hmm. i grew up where like like in my house my mom and dad had family friends that were openly gay in the in the early 80s okay so it was Never, it literally was never weird to me. Yeah. There was like, I remember one time our family friend Tom and he had a boyfriend at the time named Jerry. And I thought that when I was like five, I was like, you gotta be <laughs> fucking kidding me, Tom and Jerry. <laughs> but I, my dad, I, I asked, I can't remember because you were talking 40 years ago almost. Yeah. I can't remember if I asked my dad or my mom, but I, I was like, because they were holding hands and stuff. And I was like, what's up with and, <laughs> and, and my mom, I think it was my mom. She said, you know yeah. how your mommy and daddy love each other? And I was like, yeah. She said, that's how they love each other. I was like, all right, sweet. And then I moved on. Yeah. But I grew up in this world where it was very normalized, not to, to overuse that word that we were saying, but, no. but it, it was, it was people love people. And I don't give, well, really I think it's different when it's an environment that's normal rather than trying to force, feet. force. Yeah. yeah. But I grew up in that world and I would talk to, since a very young age, talk to gay men. I never really had that many, uh, lesbian, uh, family friends, but a gay men, and they always were hammering home to me two things. One, how fucked up AIDS was. And they're like, <laughs> everyone I know is dying, and everyone I know is dying horribly. Mm -hmm. And I remember how crazy that was. But also, the other thing was like, I just want to be, who I love is my business. And I don't want anybody else to get into my business. I want to find a world where no one fucking gets in between me and who yeah. I want to love. But it seems like the trans world is like, I have to make my business your business. Yeah. Like, I have to do everything I possibly can. And I just want to go like, if you want to be a chick, dude, awesome. Go, yeah. rock it. Go, I have a life to live. Yeah. But it seems like at, at every turn, they're trying to hammer it home. It's like, no, you have to acknowledge everything about me at all times. Yeah. And I felt like the gay community, especially in the 80s and 90s, when they were really fighting for, for you know, kind of level playing field when it came to rights, they were like, I just want... To be like every, yeah. I want society to look at me like they look at you. Just leave, leave me the yeah. fuck alone. You have your preference, I and might. and that's the kind of the difference I I've seen. You know, yeah, it, yeah, it's you know, I, being from uh, Boise, Idaho, when I grew up there, there wasn't really a lot of that. But then um, now, a lot of like the Washington, Oregon people have like migrated to Boise, and it's yeah. completely different down there. Um, but Is it's it more a, more right wing because of it. Very, no. Well, so the state will always, it's kind of very similar to te, like uh, Austin yeah. where Austin's the blue dot in yeah. a massive state of red. That's kind of what Boise is slowly becoming. Um, Boise would be the blue dot in a state of red. Uh, Cause my, my only, my only experience with Idaho is like, extreme right wing like Coeur d'Alene area yeah. it's like oh that's that's, like, that's about it's nine like hours Clive and north. Bundy yeah. type dudes like like yeah. it's so right wing that like they're not right wing like no. it's like a whole 
No, uh, Coraline's beautiful. It's, it's uh, amazing. Yeah, yeah, it's about nine hours north of uh, okay. so it's more Boise. So uh, Boise's more of a, like a metropolitan area now. I've and, been to Boise, but I just yeah. don't remember much about it. Yeah, like, it, it's uh, it's a lot different. Every time I go back, I, I feel less like I'm home. I'm like, this is not where yeah. I grew up. And and uh, I bet people feel like that about Austin. I bet people. Feel <laughs> I bet like it's it's different. Well, and the other thing too is like it's hard for me to have. Um, I don't really have a lot in common now with a lot of people there. Like, uh, you know, I grew up. Like, it's crazy. So my dad had long hair, was like a, a drummer, 80s rock band. Uh, that was a professional. Like, he was a professional drummer forever. Fucking sweet. And then my older, you know, and then he's also, like, loves old cars and is, like, into mechanics. And then my he's older. Like macho man, yeah. Yeah, well, and then my older brother was military. He was, like, a musical prodigy mm -hmm. and is also a mechanic. And he's tatted up, like. He had a big old beard, tied up, plays in a band out there now. Fucking sweet. Right. And then there's me, who was like the athlete. Yeah. But uh, the only thing I ever really had in common with them was music. Yeah. And so, like, one of the things, like, I can play, uh, you know, I play drums. I, I was in a band my sophomore year with my brother. We played a talent show. Sick. And then uh, I was really into, like, Motown and uh, blues and stuff. So I, I learned the piano. So I can play blues piano and stuff. But, yeah, other than that, it's like I go and I try to talk to them about uh, not – just my brother and my dad, uh, but just a lot of people there, very different interest. Yeah. So out here, I can talk to everyone all day about like media, uh, you know, social, like cultural stuff, uh, politics or fitness. But when I go back there, it's kind of like, what are we doing here? Like what's going yeah. on? And, and football's huge out there because of Boise State. But yeah. And Boise State still has that sick blue turf. I played all my high school games so there. So sick. Yeah. yeah. It was, it was, yeah, that was that was probably like the peak time to live there was around 2011, 2012 when they were unstoppable. They play fun football too. It's like yeah. a fun type yeah, of they would football. Like do all kinds of crazy stuff, yeah. but I mean, it was so fun because they never lost. Yeah. So every weekend it was like I wonder how bad they're going to beat this team this week. And it's they, almost like it's like a like a debate with Trump. Yeah, like there's <laughs> yeah. like which dork are we going to bring up to yeah. have him roast? Right oh, now? just and destroy him. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And and then the cool thing was is like I got we got to hang out with the players afterwards. Yeah. Like they were just our friends. It wasn't anything like we we didn't really hold them on a pedestal. So that yeah, was a really good yeah, it's time. Way different in L. A. Because for so long there was no since the Raiders left. Man, it was like. A long dearth of no professional football. So yeah. the Trojans, well, they got like three teams. The so. Trojans, they were they were oh, not yeah. on a level playing field. Like when the Trojans showed up at, at, at Gold's Gym Venice, it was like oh, it, it was like the Lakers. I mean, your people yeah. were like oh fuck, you know, USC Trojan football. You know? Oh yeah, well you, I, UCLA basketball too. Like, yeah, the, the city of Boise, like they, that is like we don't have any pro teams. Like yeah. I grew up with no pro teams, and every now and then, like probably our most popular semi-pro was uh the idaho steelheads hockey team yeah those are a ton of fun to go to those hockey games but then like they tried to dabble in like the arena football we had like the boise burn but then that faded out but boise state that is our professional team that city goes crazy they for got them. good wrestling too though they yeah but really they good. actually got a real wrestling program i'm just saying the state of idaho oh, i'm yeah. not talking about necessarily boise but yeah it was uh um so yeah, it was pretty iconic, but yeah, that was... Uh, I'd uh, imagine they, there's probably the pretty, fitness pretty good there, MMA in, in Idaho. Uh, Scott Jorgensen has a camp oh, that's out right. there. Yeah, yeah. Um, but yeah, I would say actually the fitness scene got... A, it's what got me into it, though, was when I was younger, was uh, bodybuilding.com is headquartered out of there. Oh, nice. And so we, uh, every uh, like May or June, they would do an expo. And so we go to get to meet all these people. I got to meet Terry Crews, nice. and I got to see him the night before. And it was funny when I went to the expo... Um, he was like, Josh. And everyone's like, how the hell do you know Terry Crews? And yeah. I met like Clay Guida and like all these cool guys. And so Terry uh, Crews is a huge cock. Yeah. <laughs> I don't mind exposing he's peak, that. He's peak man. Yeah. No, I've just seen don't it. grab him. He'll... I've saw his dong. Yeah. He was training at gold's gym in Pasadena <laughs> and I just got it into radio and he came out. He, he's a super nice guy. Oh yeah. So nothing nice. negative to say that guy. And he looks really intimidating. Like he's big. He's a yeah. big fucking guy. And uh, but he he showered and he got and I was like, of course. First off, because celebrity. So you're like, I want to see celebrity cock. But I was like, <laughs> I was like, oh my, oh my god. Ugh. And then like six, three or four months later, I saw him at a red. No, it was at the Grammys at the Grammys uh -huh. round table. And I was like, I gotta be honest with you about something. He's like, what, what is it, man? He's like, I was at Gold Gym Pasadena one time and you were there. You have a fucking huge dick. And he starts. I was like, I, I honestly, like, yeah. not only was I sausage gazing, but I double took because I thought 
I was like, well, that's paper mache. Yeah. And like, <laughs> this is a, this is a prank show uh, where the celebrity has the like Dirk Diggler dong and and you're getting our reaction but then i was like no that's all you yeah. <laughs> and he's like well yeah thank you i, yeah. I mean i'm not going to deny this you know Ugh. huge huge man god in the pants only you could get away with that if i ever said some shit like that it'd be hands on site i don't know if i up. i don't know if i would have said that to him if we weren't at a media junker junk uh, a junket i don't like think i'd walk up to the bar and be like hey dude senior dong uh, yeah sweet well and then what happened like a couple years later he like exposed like producers for grabbing him inappropriately. They uh, well, listen. He got a lot of heat for that, but there was so much made about sexual harassment, right, in yeah. Hollywood, and it's a serious issue. I'm not trying to uh, minimize that, but like guys get sexually harassed pretty significantly in Hollywood. I I had a gay guy a producer who could absolutely make things happen for me, mm-hmm. uh, like sending me dick pics on my te- texting me dick pics and and like propositioning me and talking about how much it would help me if I were. And I, I don't know how much I can talk about. Um, I was on the air at Loveline. Uh-huh. And I, I won't use any names or anything, but uh, I'll just say this guy was in pr- television development and I showed Drew. I was like this. And he's like, the fuck? you know, <laughs> so we get off the air and he's like, you can't like, you got to handle this immediately. Yeah. So I walk outside. I call him. And he's like, hi, you know, and I was like, hey, listen, stop. Yeah. I'm not going to call an attorney. I'm not going to, but you need to know. Fucking stop it. Yeah. And if you don't, I don't care if it ends my career. I'll, uh, I'll expose you and I'm going to beat the fucking shit out of you. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And I said, not because I'm weirded out by gay stuff. I said, because you're essentially propositioning yeah. me. Imagine if I, you were straight and I was a woman. I'm like, I'm going to, I won't. Well, it's predator behavior. Let's it, yeah. pretend this never happened right now and move on or you're fucked. I will end your life. And I don't care if it ends my career. I will end your shit. Yeah. And, uh, that was the last I ever heard from that fellow, never, but, um, never got it. So yeah. when Terry Crews says something like, that, I was like, Oh yeah, I buy it. I yeah. totally buy it. That, that shit goes on, you know? Yeah. Well, they're all kind of Hollywood's on the hot seat now. Like people are starting Except to cat Williams. Yeah, dude, he's on fire right now. But I, uh, yeah, no, I mean on, uh, on the Terry, <laughs> Terry Crews note, uh, you know, we'll we'll wrap it up. So, um, Mikey uh, loves likes you podcast. Yes, we're thinking about changing that name. Yeah, because it's a play on a famous life serial commercial that no one who listens to my podcast was born to see. Oh. hey, Mikey likes it. It was like a famous. It's like uh, you know, where's the B for we'll double do- A uh, uh, MCO? It was like a famous thing, right? But I realized very quickly, I was like, almost no one is my age, and. If I want it to be successful, it certainly can't pander to that audience. I got to, yeah. uh, and no one knows Mikey likes it. So it just seems like a kind of a stupid name. No, I get it. That's what, I mean, that's why I was telling you earlier, I changed the name of my, uh, the other channel. It was just like, it was too long. It was, it was getting, I was getting tired of explaining my last name is Job, not Job. Yeah. And so, yeah, sometimes you just got to switch it up. What should bit. I change it to? I don't know. I was thinking of Thick Cock Mc, McNasty. <laughs> How about... <laughs> Shit pack McFuckstein. <laughs> just, just the most horrific name you can think of. I was at the get censored real quick on YouTube. I was at Jiu Jitsu the other day, and there's a kid who does MMA, and he's getting ready f- for a fight. I was like, "Do you have a fight name?" He's like, "No, man. You got any ideas?" And I go, "Yeah. Hear me out." I go, "You're the Cosby." <laughs> and he goes, "What?" I go, "You're gonna put people to sleep and fuck them." <laughs> Sick, right? He's it like, is. "No, it's not." I was uh, like, "Oh, you're wrong. You're missing see, the boat." This is why I like hanging out with the comics. Is like, <laughs> I have dark humor and I say <laughs> wild shit, and it's like most of my friends I say it to, they're like, "Yeah, right, you, man. you will, you will pay that price." I growing up, <laughs> yeah. growing like in my yeah. all, early adulthood, all was in in radio, morning radio, and like around comics and stuff. Yeah, and then I would get out into the real world. Yeah. And I'd be like, oh fuck. Like, and then you don't know it until it until that that moment of silence. Yeah, I I was audition not auditioning, but Gold Gym was thinking about putting together their own podcast, right? So they flew me out to Venice. I was like, Do you understand I lived a block away for like 10 years and now I live in Texas and you guys want to <laughs> fucking do it? But but the people who bought Gold's Gym cor- corporate were German. It's a German company. Yeah. And so the Germans were out there and they were they were nice to move to, nice to move to the place. And they go, this was like two years ago. So it was like kind of more peak of pandemic stuff okay and uh they're like uh do you feel like 
it's uh, scary being in Texas where people do not wear masks as much or this social distancing. <laughs> and I go, uh, you know what? Not really because I'm dying of AIDS. <laughs> and it's like silent. <laughs> I'm like, it's a joke. Yeah. And then he goes, and his interpreter goes, he goes, ah, it's okay. That's it. You're joking. That's it. I understand. Yeah. yeah, yeah, dude. I I have a hard time like interacting with a lot of, uh, especially in the fit world. Where there's so there's so much sensitivity. Everyone's well, so like easily like they're always on edge, and so I'll say some crazy shit, and then they just freeze up, and then I'm like, sorry, people. And also, it's weird. How people in the fitness world take themselves so fucking seriously. And I'll never forget. I was hanging out with Josh Homme. I'm not going to name drop it, but this was a, this was an industry party. It wasn't like I, I was like, Hey Josh, want to go out and get some drinks? (laughs) There was a, it was a Maxim party in Vegas and we were hanging out and it was like the Mastodon and the Foo Fighters and Queens. I was like, this is the coolest fucking party ever. Uh, And we were just bullshitting. And he's like, I always found it really, he was at, like, he's like a million feet tall and he's handsome and has that deep voice, you know, he's, he's smoking. He's like, I always found it real weird, you know, how people who write rock songs take themselves seriously like they're doing something. He's like, I take what I do very seriously, <laughs> but I don't take myself because, like, uh. I write songs. I write music for people to bang their heads to. You know? <laughs> and I always, I was like, yeah, I guess yeah. You, you can take your work very seriously. You not have to pretend like yeah. you're a fucking... Nobel Prize winner, you know, that like, you know, yeah, that's like a thing happening nowadays. Everyone seems to like act like they're like, it's like uh, they'll, they'll talk, uh, uh, as if it's the uh, best way to explain it, but it's almost like, it's like a dramatic, sad part in a movie. Yeah. Like they're always trying to like give like an inspirational conversation and they're always like building themselves up. And I'm like, dude, we're sitting at a bar right now. Like yeah. you're talking like you're, you're like trying to sell yourself you know, convincing God to let you into heaven or something like, like fuck off. Yeah. yeah like, <laughs> like there's Jocko and Tim and like, yeah. they exist for a reason. Like they've done stuff where you, yeah, they should take themselves pretty this seriously with it. You know, like you're, you, you have a great physique. Yeah. Awesome. Well, it's just most people I, I was telling, uh, when I did a show with one of the comics I was talking about when, uh, I went on a date and, uh, this girl just would not shut up and yeah. she would not stop talking. Like, like I was watching like a, Chris Williamson motivational speech. <laughs> she just kept talking in, in speeches like that. And she's just talking about like talking herself up. Like she was super important and I I'm this, I'm going to be this and this. And it's like, was she hot? Well, she wasn't like ugly or like, she wasn't like unattractive or anything, yeah. but the more she spoke and it made it. Her yeah. It was like, all right, I'm fed up with you. Because I, I think how, how hot a girl is, is how long yeah. you'll put up with that. Yeah. Yeah. That's you know, very like, true. I mean, like, there's nothing to me though that's more attractive than either a super intelligent girl that can have like a really like interesting conversation, yeah. like hold one, or someone that's hilarious as shit. A girl that's funny is one of the hottest things. You it can is. It's legitimately funny too. Yeah, yeah. No, I agree. Um, you, Je- you know Jessie Mae Peluso? She's a comic. I I know the name. Yeah, she's uh, she's she's just so appealing to me. She's so charismatic, but she's so, she's so talented. She's so yeah. funny. Um, it makes it like, it like elevates her physically so much. But, uh, uh, I also think though, like there's a certain level of intelligence and that's men or this isn't a gender slant thing, men or women where they become very uninteresting Yeah, because they're almost weird, like too weird. Um, when you meet those like, like young Sheldon types, you know, like, like it was like the 200 IQ people, like they almost can't function around you. you They're not probably like socialized. Yeah. I have a lot of friends in like the tech world and they're like big coders and they'll talk to me and I, it's like, I almost get um, like anxiety, like overwhelmed because yeah. they're, it's like they're in a race to finish the sentence as if they're going to like run out of life. Well, and, they also, you also uh, think they're getting frustrated talking to you. Yeah. Like you're, they're like, oh, you dumb fuck. Yeah. <laughs> and I, I certainly, maybe they yeah. aren't, but I feel that way. I, the, the, uh, my, I told you, I said, I only had really like one and a half girlfriends. Yeah. One of them was, and like I date, this girl was like, I wanted to be in a relationship with her, but she graduated UCLA early. She graduated UCLA, but when she was like 19, her undergrad and went to MIT, like she was like weird smart. Yeah. And it ruined it. Cause I was like the whole time I'm uh, feeling weird. Yeah. Uh, I'm like, well, she's just gotta be like thinking I'm a caveman. I'm yeah. so fucking stupid. And secondly, like she couldn't 
Like I, I, we'd go hang out with people. Like we go to the Kings game or something, and it's like everything was a problem because yeah. she's this weird outlier, you know. So, yeah, I'm a, I'm an extreme like analytical thinker, but I know when to like bury that and just enjoy, you know, the environment I'm in or something. I try not to like overanalyze or, you know, look too deep into some stuff. Sometimes yeah. I just kind of let things be. Because like I I know that when there's people like that probably like uh, uh, old girlfriend of yours, they when they do that then they tend to nitpick everything and just ruins the whole time. And I try to like just take things as they come. Also, it's really comforting not to know a lot, dude. I get so jealous of like you you ever meet those like people that are just. It's not that they're dumb. It's just that they're like almost. It's like probably the nicest way to phrase it is like clueless. Like they're yeah. so innocent and clueless that. It's almost like they have a such a a more positive like outlook on life. One of my best friends married a lady who works for the Department of Homeland Security, oh. <laughs> and she would just have these conversations with me. Yeah. I, I like her very much. I like him. He was really close to me, and so and his wife's great. But she would start talking to me, and I was like, "Nope, no, nah, I'm good." Yeah, because I was like, "If I, I'm really happy. I don't know that we're almost blown up all the time." <laughs> yeah. Oh my god. Yeah. <laughs> I'm pretty I'm happy. Stressed out. Well, you know who's a good example of that is uh, your friend. Um, the infamous Theo Vaughn. Yeah. He just seems to be, uh, I got to see him perform once actually at Vulcan and um, talking to them afterwards. Like he just seems to always just be like, like enjoying whatever interaction he is currently in. He just, it's like, he sees like the most in it. He's a very nice guy. Yeah. Theo's a very nice guy. We're not that super close, but I've, I've, I've hung out with him. And then when he used to do King of the Sting with Brendan, I would go on yeah. and, and I, I had him on my show with Drew and, He's a very nice guy. He's also, he's just so super talented, but he's like a genuinely nice person. Yeah. Well, and what I, yeah. And kind of what I mean by like, he just, um, I, you know, I'll watch his show and he has these like, you know, he had a coroner on a garbage man yeah. and he just seems so like genuinely interested in things. I am and, like learns and learns all this stuff. And, and that's, that's what I mean. Like I'm jealous of those people. I wish I, I could. Well, I, I, I love, I don't know. I, Everyone always asks me, they're like, would you like to have fill in the blank on the show? I'm not referring to you, by the way. I'm talking about, like, people will ask me about, especially when I was working in AM talk radio. I mean, they're like, you want to have AOC on the show? You want to have, and I go, I'm I'm nothing against her, but like, what are we going to talk about except for (laughs) press points and that, and nothing, I'm not going to, I want to talk to, you know what I really, like the other day I was thinking, I was like, you know, I love the interview. People will all watch the Super Bowl and they're like, I want to interview Patrick Mahomes. I want to interview... Taylor Swift. I want to. I want to interview the cameraman whose job it was to film Taylor Swift. <laughs> yeah. And I want to know, like, yeah. just like, did, were you trained on her? Yeah. And then they would just switch to you when they, they felt like, did you get every marching play? orders, yeah. or was there like, do you normally a cameraman in the Super Bowl, or are you right. someone who's filming Taylor Swift? <laughs> I, I want to talk to the Tosh does a new show, Daniel Tosh, and that's the same thing. He's like, yeah. no politicians, no celebrities. He talked to his wife's OBGYN. He talked to like, <laughs> like a like a plastic surgeon in in, yeah. a, in LA. And like that's interesting. I agree. I want to I want to interview the girls in Two Girls One Cup. Yeah, I'm fascinated. <laughs> I'm fascinated because like no seriously because like clearly they were not all that bummed to have poopy poopy in their mouth. So I go. Well, I got suspended for showing kids on the bus at when I was in high school. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Ah, yeah, it's so good yeah that's so worth no, it trouble. <laughs> i but, but like i know that's a not a very timely reference but like i'm thinking there's they probably would have made similar money just blowing dudes right and and taking it in in the poop shoot they changed the game right but like so innovative thinkers is is it drugs is it <laughs> is it are you crazy are you crazy are you a crazy like vince mcmahon apparently got a, had a threesome with his homie and then shit on a chick's face in the middle, I go, what? I'm pretty wild. That's, I need to know. Were you ho- were you thinking that that wouldn't end the threesome? <laughs> I just like, don't know where that interest comes from. Like, people are fucking. I don't even know where smacking chicks are around. Like, guys yeah. are in. I don't even like watching that porn where the guys are like really aggressive. I was like, wait, whoa. Isn't this yeah. about like, aren't like, we romantic? Isn't something? this supposed to be intimate now? Yeah. <laughs> semi-violent like i you know the little choke in here you know i I get i get that like that's it's sexual like when like there's porn where guys are into it and they're like guys are smack and i'm like whoa 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 what are we doing like yeah it's those those girls are like intimidating as fuck to be around and talk to because like they like i have friends that like are into that kind of like the ones i was talking about earlier and 
they the, the way they say it so effortlessly, like, yeah, I love that shit. And I'm like, girls do. That's another thing. Like, there's this whole bullshit feminist narrative. It's like, you have to treat a woman like, like, no, there's some girls. Like, I, there was, I remember this one girl who, want, she was like, hit me, hit me. <laughs> and, and I was young. I was like, these are smoking hot Armenian chick. And, uh, and I'd be like smacking the ass. And she's like, no, hit me. And I was like, N- I like, and then I, re- I realized like she wanted me to like hit some combos. Like she wanted me to like <laughs> XX. Circle, and I'm circle. like, I can't, uh, I, we, I stopped. I yeah. was like, I can't listen. I'll pull your hair a little bit and we'll have some, but yeah. What are we doing? Yeah. Yeah. I, 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 uh, I don't know. There's, there's some weird kinks out there. And then like, I hear like the crazy just shit about like people that get, uh, like, depositions and stuff or like go uh are getting sued for that stuff like yeah. Vince McMahon and I'm just like what, what? Yeah. <laughs> yeah like if you're a troll yeah and you have access to hot chicks asking to pay them for like I go like okay I'm, yeah you shouldn't do that but you want hot chicks I get yeah. that the guys who are like I don't want to piss on you Ugh, and I'm just, like what yeah or even even like unthreatening stuff like not not too threatening like Louis Louis yeah. wanting to oh, masturbate yeah. in front of people. I go, well, where's their appeal? Dude, it was, uh, I was at, um, uh, what was it? I think it was Saturday. Um, I had these guys in town that uh, we might do like advertising with and just different promotional stuff. Yeah. They flew in from LA. And we decided to go see, um, uh, we were grabbing a drink at Mitzi's at uh-huh. Rogan's Bar. And uh, one of the guys that was working there came in and he's like, hey, I got a couple extra seats if you guys want to come watch the show. Yeah. And um, so we went in there, and uh, Dan Soder was headlining. Nice, and he I like Dan very much. Yeah, mm-hmm. but he had a, a bit. Um, Never met him, but he's oh, good. Really? He's oh, good he on. He's, he's good on radio too. He's yeah. a very good radio. Oh, he was. It was, a, it was a great show. I was yeah. laughing my ass off. But he did have a a bit. Uh, I won't dive into it because it's his. But he was uh, bringing up people with foot fetishes. Mm-hmm. He's like, "Where's that?" Hi, he's like, "For guys like me, like that's just a foot." So I don't see the appeal. Yeah, guys are always like, uh, you know. <laughs> Correct me if I'm wrong. Yeah, <laughs> uh, my 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 black friends out there, but all all, all black guys I hang out with are always into feet. Really, yeah. black guys like feet. I don't know. I've never really. I, asked remember, I remember the first time I held, I hosted, filled in for Regis, and I flew back to L.A. And my, my friend Tim called me a black dude. He's like, hey, "How about them feet? Tell me about Kelly Ripa's feet." And I was like, <laughs> "Gotta be honest, it wasn't. Yeah. I'm really looking. Yeah, I, I, just their feet. You just walk yeah. on them. Like I don't know. I uh, I had a friend. She's a comic. She's now out in L.A. And she was telling me that like she had to stop posting pictures like full body ones because yeah. her comments would get flooded and then messages about her feet. And I'm like, no, I get it. That's so yeah. Like weird. I'll pay you to to show me your feet. And my wife's like, what? Yeah, and there's a whole app now. Uh, one of my friends, one of the OnlyFans ones I was talking yeah. about, uh, she uses it and it's called Feet Finder, and you literally sell pictures of your feet. What the fuck? I do that. I would too. I, I'm not going to exploit myself in it much, but if someone would give me money for my feet, I'd fucking, what's, what's the what's downside? Yeah. yeah. What's the downside? I, yeah. There are guys that do it. Good for them. There has to be. I, honestly, <laughs> like, they'll get a pedicure, I, pay, clear nail polish, and then pass it off. I have some shit. to be in the market because my DMs, like, my DMs run wild, mm-hmm. but it's like mostly guys. Yeah. Yeah. That seems to be the thing. Uh, you know, um, when he lived out here, I, I was really good friends with uh, Callum Von Moger. Mm-hmm. And we would talk about that, how like a lot of his DMs are just dudes. Well, and he's like like twink pretty too. So he was probably he was like, massive. <laughs> yeah, but but also but most gay guys are. At least gay guys in my crew, like oh, they're yeah. always fucking jack. Yeah. Well, but, he's not gay, but he uh No, yeah. no, 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 no. But I mean he has that look. Yeah. Like I always assumed There's another guy like a friend of mine out here, Ross Flanagan. There's Luke Carroll. Uh he's uh one of the owners of Iron Rebel. Yeah. Like we always talk about like he just gets all these thirsty dudes all the time. Doesn't my matter wife, how many times. Because I said, no. I was like, I don't think I look gay. Yeah. And my wife said, No, you don't. You look like a straight guy who a gay guy could probably pull. And I was like, Oh. And then so I hit, my, hit up my gay buddy. He's like, Yeah, that's a very. He's like, You don't look like a gay guy, mm-hmm. but you look like a straight guy who you might be Let. able to 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 switch teams just for a night. Yeah. And I was like, Oh, all right, yeah. all right, I'll take it. I mean, if it look, it's a compliment. If it may, yeah. By the way, very. The most bitchy, scrutinizing, physically, physically, like their standards are so high. Get bitchy gay dudes. Yeah. So if I can hit that crew, I mean, I'm very flattered by that. But, uh, you know, it's just weird. It's just, it's just a weird thing, especially because, like, I don't find it threat. I don't weird, weird out at yeah. all about it. But I also am like, really, you want, 
like this guy, I mean, I could actually show you the DM because it's beyond. He wants my cum. And I don't mean like he wants to have an intimate experience with me. Just he wants, wants me cup. and I go, do you mean like, like a Starbucks cup that I, <laughs> and he's like, whatever, honestly, if you can just get it to me. And I was like, where are you? He's like, I'm in Miami. And I was like, you want my, like, you just want me to send my cum? So I need to know about that. I should have that guy in the pocket. Yeah, dude, what's his life story? Yeah. I always think about that too when I'm driving and I see like a shoe on the highway. Yeah. Where'd that one, where'd the other shoe go? Like, what's the story behind that one? And That's a hammered person. Yeah. It's like, are they just now walking around with one shoe until they get more? Like, I've I lost see. a shoe. Yeah. Twice. Both times Las Vegas. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I come back to my hotel room. I'm like, oh, I have one shoe. <laughs> <We're>, oh. <laughs> what's happening right now? <laughs> yeah. Been there. Yeah, dude. It's a. Uh, yeah, there's a lot of fun stuff coming up. Uh, kind of wrapping things up. Tell people where they can find you. Mikey Likes You is the podcast available wherever podcasts are available. Then also at Mike Catherwood is by far the best place to get in touch with me or to see whatever's going on in my life. See the Flex Friday run the, the yeah. <laughs> Not overly filtered though. No, but, well, I, mean, so I think some of those pictures were, but some ah, weren't. Fuck them. Some weren't, yeah. Everyone. It's art. Just don't tell uh, Goob when we see him. My physique is he'll, he'll, he'll rip it apart. <laughs> no, he's awesome. I love John. Um, but cool, man. Well, this was fun. It Finally was. back in the zone. I, it's been a while since I've, I've been able to do a pod. So we're uh, me and Johnny over here, we're going to start busting out tons of stuff. Awesome. And, uh, we'll uh, we'll run it back here soon. Absolutely. So, I really appreciate it. Always, uh, not only uh, that, but uh, all the support in general since you and I have uh, become friends. I really do appreciate it. No, Thank yeah. You. Likewise, man. Encouragement goes a long ways. So... On that note, Johnny, take us out.